I don't know if you're aware of this, but working in the entertainment field can be, well... Rough. Wonderful, but really hard. Ridiculous. I mean, I love it, but everything about it is appealing. Let's call it challenging. It's sometimes a long time between jobs. A long time. And if there's no work, there's no money. And no insurance. Not good. And then you get a job and everything changes. There's nothing better. Until your show closes. Or the film goes into turnaround. That means they aren't going to make it. Or your TV show gets canceled. Or the dance company folds. Or you get injured. It's a lot. It's a great business, except when it's not. The good news is the Actors Fund. Oh my god, I love the Actors Fund. Now, the first thing you have to know is that it's not just for actors. Say it with me. It's not just for actors. It's not just for actors. Now say it in French. Ce n'est pas seulement pour les acteurs. Now say it in Hebrew. L'orac les sarkanim. It's not just for actors. And not just for theater people. If you work in film, television, or any of the performing arts, the Actors Fund is here for everyone in entertainment. Everyone. The Actors Fund helps playwrights, film editors, opera singers, songwriters, ushers, sound designers, key grips. Gaffers, dancers, dressers, agents, anyone in the entertainment or performing arts community, they all can come to the Actors Fund if they need help or support. And now, there's the Friedman Health Center, right in the heart of Times Square. I don't know what that is. All your health care can now be through the Actors Fund. They have wonderful doctors and specialists. And they have extended hours because they know that our schedules are crazy. And they take all kinds of insurance. Great, what if I don't have insurance? If you don't have insurance, there are these genius people on staff at the Friedman Center that will help you find insurance that you can afford. And it's not just for actors? That's right. Have you been to the Actors Fund home in Englewood, New Jersey? No. How old do you think I am? It doesn't matter how old you are, you should know about the home. Okay. And I would guess like 47. The Actors Fund Home is an assisted living and skilled nursing care facility which provides a beautiful and comfortable living environment for 149 entertainment professionals on six acres of property. The grounds are gorgeous. Gorgeous. The whole place sparkles and there's a friendly, compassionate staff. And they are expanding. They have a brand new rehabilitation center on site and it has been singled out as one of this country's best nursing homes by US News and World Report. All of this is the Actors Fund. There's lots more. There's emergency financial assistance, there's the Career Center. The Dancers Resource, a comprehensive HIV AIDS initiative and affordable housing. The Phyllis Newman Women's Health Initiative, senior services and addiction and recovery services. They do all of this. And they do it really well. They understand how bananas this business is. Their programs are designed with entertainment professionals in mind. They get it. They are our safe place. Our safety net. And they are completely essential to our community. And not just for actors. The Actors Fund. For everyone. 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 Everyone in entertainment. Welcome to the Borough Vignettes Marathon, a star-studded evening of one-act comedies and conversation, all to benefit the Actors Fund. Starring Barry Bostick. You know, I was in Hamlet. Mary Chifo. Well, who's my big strong girl? Lydia Cornell. You can't eat Max! Maxwell Gale Jr. We're on quarantine. How are we gonna do a benefit? Michelle Green. This is not this is called Skype. Yvonne Young. It's really hard to keep your sanity and looks at this time. Jane Kaczmarek. And that, that thing you did with, <laughs> with your tongue. Adam Langdon. That's totally cringe. Jenny Leona. I've decided to revert back to childhood. Fred Melamed. Life is full of surprises. <laughs> Jim Meskimen. Because I don't deal with no robocalls. I only deal with live flesh and blood Americans. Don Most. Yeah, I guess this whole virus stuff is making me hypersensitive. Gail O'Grady. It's gotta be five o'clock somewhere, Bubba. Emma Fitzer Price. I can't believe we lost our whole senior year. Linda Pearl. Don't push it, Val. You don't want this thing going viral. Susan Rattan. Just 
Shut up and answer my question. John Schneider. Hey, I did not steal the song. Great minds think alike. <laughs> Renee Taylor. Zoom? What the hell is Zoom? Robert Wu. Me? I hang around all day. Nobody bothers me. Nobody bothers me. And now, here's your host, Jim Meskimen. Hi there, I'm Jim Meskimen. Welcome to the Viral Vignettes Marathon, where we are uh, screening a lot of the uh, wonderful viral vignettes that were made during this crazy pandemic period with some of the more talented people in Hollywood, writers and actors who came together to put a little bit of creativity into what was threatening to be a rather uncreative time. And uh, I think they did a terrific job of it. This was all uh, done to benefit the Actors Fund, which of course is a very helpful fund to people in the creative arts, not just actors, but also dancers and puppeteers and people in opera and you know people who were definitely hit hard during the lockdown. And so we're gonna be screening uh, quite a few of these viral vignettes today for your enjoyment. And uh, if you would care to make a donation to the Actors Fund at any point, please don't stop yourself. And we have a wonderful panel of people to talk to. Let me introduce our first panelists here. We've got Barry Bostwick, Max Gale Jr., Yvonne Hyung, Jane Kaczmarek, Jenny Leona, Fred Melamed, Emma Fitzer Price, John Schneider, the legendary Renee Taylor. Probably everybody's legendary on this list. We've got our legendary writers, Fred Stroppel, Kurt Freed, Steve Van Patten, and of course, we have the creator and executive producer of Viral Vignettes, the head honcho, Mr. David Levin. Well, here we are. We got a huge panel of talented people that have lots of things to say, and they all got involved with viral vignettes. Maxwell Gale is there. Max, how did you get roped into this whole thing? I got a call and, uh, you know, uh, explaining it, and that's really all it took. You know, there, there are a lot of, lot of things that we can support and our whatever size donation we can make and kind of spread it out and be part of that, you know, but, but you wonder, well, how can I really actually contribute and and especially for the actors fund it seemed like a great opportunity and then uh you know uh, john and i have not met but i'm i'm certainly aware of his uh, widespread of uh, talent and uh you know he's a wonderful uh, singer and, and an actor and you know so it just seemed and then, and then the story fit you know that relationship of people that were in a band a long time ago it, 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 there's a universality to it so well john schneider uh, uh, max just said some kind things you can rebut now if you like <laughs> well, 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 fine. thank you max i appreciate that um yeah there's a special camaraderie that people uh people have who've been banned i was talking earlier today about uh when you're in community theater you're an actor you have to be a singer you have to be a dancer or move well as they told me uh, Bill Fetz put on a great pair of beards. I mean, you have to you have to kind of do it all. And there's, there's a that uh, evolves from that kind of lifestyle. So when, as you as you so aptly put it, when this like disastrous thing started to threaten our very ability to create, leave it to a bunch of you know the island of misfit toys, as my wife calls us. Leave it to the island of misfit toys to figure out a way to still be able to do what we do and still reach the map without having to, uh, without having to really bow down to the world that said, no, stop, you must not, you must not do this anymore. So we figured out a way around it. And uh, so I, I applaud this whole notion. I think it's, I think it's fantastic. Um, hopefully it's not the only way we get to act together apart in the future. It's a lot of fun, and, and uh, I applaud you for thinking so uh, outside of the box. Well, let's take a look at Bandmates, starring John Schneider and Max Gale. Enjoy. Rick, hey. Hey, man. Hey, what's going on? Not a whole lot. I'm uh, I'm watching Tiger King. Uh, uh, that's about it. So did Rita call you? Who? Rita, your ex, Rita. Oh, that that Rita. <laughs> Look, uh, I know it's the 
end of the world and all, but I, why, why would Rita call me? Unless she wants to apologize for 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 sucking my blood to the marrow for the last 10 years, $3,000 a month. Never wrote a song on one note. Never touched a guitar except to snort my cocaine off it. Well, Rita's putting together a benefit. Well, that's right. Like, she's a big publicist now. And she would, uh, she'd like to get the whole band together. You know, you, me, everybody back together. Oh, wow. That, uh, that sounds like one of her ditzy ideas. Mm -hmm. We're on quarantine. How are we going to do a benefit? Unless you, you got the keys to the Staples Center? No. <laughs> no, no. We do it online. We do it online. Uh, Live stream. You know how that's everything's done uh, nowadays? Live stream is a young man's game. You know, I, I don't even have Wi-Fi. Okay. And I I don't have any of my outfits. They are uh, um, back in Vegas. You have a microphone? Oh, sure, I got a microphone, but the microphones, and then there are microphones, you know, if if you want to have the right sound quality. It's for charity, Rick. Okay, nobody cares about sound quality. We just get on our separate screens and we jam out. Simple. <laughs> What's for charity? One of those coronavirus ones. Ah, uh, okay, because <laughs> I'm, already, I'm already doing... Uh, uh, mad cow disease and, 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 and lupus, you know, I don't want to get myself overextended. All well, you have to do is sing, man. Open up those golden pipes and look, the main thing is we're going to be bringing <laughs> entertainment to the culturally deprived folks, making our fans happy. We still have fans. Yeah, and we'll make new ones too. Lots of people have never seen us <laughs> perform. This will be their first chance. The lucky bastards. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's a chance to expand our base and I've written a brand new song for the occasion. A new song. You. Yes. Is it a song or a chord progression? Because, you know, you, you are the master of the 10 second rift and over. It's a full song. You want to hear it? Not necessarily. But hmm? yeah. Well, this is just the chorus. I haven't uh, haven't polished the verse yet, but it goes like this. Uh, We're lost in dystopia, dystopia, dystopia. This, you know, like kind of like that. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Stan, I, I don't mean to piss on your campfire, but that song has already been read. What? The Age of Aquarius. Not Age of Aquarius. Oh, come on. Aquarius. It, yeah, sure. It's it's it, it's similar. <laughs> it's the same song, and it's about fifty years old. You know, you you couldn't even steal a newer song. Hey. I did not steal the song. Great minds think alike. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess you were you were thinking uh, alike with George Harrison when you stole his song. Remember? No. I still say Harrison stole that song from me. Uh, well, that ain't what the judge decided. Okay. All right. Look. Look. I'm not. I'm not a one-trick pony. Okay. Look. Uh, uh, here's another one. Um, apocalypse. Apocalypse. Sam, changing the words doesn't help. It's the same music. You are such a purist, man. That's, that's what I love about you, Rick. You hold us all to the highest standard. I appreciate the ass kissing, but this whole benefit sounds like a cheesy stunt to me. No, no. It is a gesture of goodwill from one of America's most beloved bands. <sighs> and it's a perfect setup for our reunion tour. I'm not doing any goddamn reunion tour. I told you. Okay, okay fine. Fine, look, but the benefit is a great opportunity, so don't spoil it for the rest of us, okay? The rest? Everybody is on board. Er, uh, Ludwig, uh, Phil already has his drum kit set up in the basement. He is ready to go, man. Uh -huh. And Hans? Yes, Hans is in. Hans is in. Really? You spoke to him? Rita. Rita. She, she did. He's doing really well. He's got some kind of hydrophonics business going, and... I'm sure you've seen him on those erectile dysfunction commercials. And is he going to apologize? Yeah, apologize, but but for, for what? For that damn book. The book? Oh, come on. That was a long time ago. Nobody remembers that. I remember. Let bygones be bygones. <laughs> you know, let him be bygone. You know what he wrote about me? Telling the whole damn world about my, my, my drug problem? The whole world already knew about your drug problem, Rick. You titled your first solo album, Sweet Cocaine.
Uh, yeah, yeah, they 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 knew about the the cult, but but not about my, you know, trouble with the painkillers and the mushrooms and or <laughs> the time we tried to smoke that one girl's tampon, <laughs> which was surprisingly potent. <laughs> yes, and, and it was your idea if memory serves me. <laughs> okay, yet I'm the one that gets painted as the, as the, as the junkie crackhead. Look, maybe you and Hans should talk this out before the show. I'm not doing any show with Hans. I don't even want to be in the same room with him. You won't be in the same room, Rick. Well, then I refuse to occupy the same cosmic space. Okay, and you should too. You read his book, didn't you? Look, I think at times like this, we have got to rise above our petty grievances and embrace the greater good. Uh, uh, speaking of the greater good, just what are you and Rita getting out of this? What? Nothing. It's charity. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. You're such a big philanthropist. As I recall, you used to throw nickels uh, around like manhole covers. Okay. Now suddenly you want to do a freebie for the benefit of mankind, like your Oprah or Mother Teresa. I, you know, let's say I'm, 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 I'm just a trifle suspicious of your motives, considering that you are such a cheap bastard. Check the link. It's totally legit, and I am not cheap. You know, I, I just can't believe that you would accuse me of exploiting a global pandemic for my own personal benefit. I find that really offensive. Well, I find it really offensive that you exploited our professional relationship so that you could bang my wife. What are you, ta what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah, come, on. come on, Stan, don't bullshit me. Rita and I break up and suddenly she's your manager and, and, and your publicist and your, and your live-in life coach. No, not suddenly. It was a couple of years later. You were keeping it a secret until then. I happen to know that you and Rita were getting it on while I was in rehab. The first time, not by when we were still married. Where did you hear that? I was in the book. You didn't read it, did you? Sure, I did. Ch chapter 8, page 157, is burned into my brain and my heart while I was locked up in Sonora eating, eating kale and kumquats. You and Rita were at the Chateau Marmont using up the rest of my stash and having your heavy metal orgasms waking up all the neighbors. Is that what Hans said? How would he know? <laughs> because he was doing Rita too. She went through the whole band and after roadies, didn't she? Did she know that? Chapter 10? No wonder she kept hiding the book from me. I bet you were too cheap to buy it in the first place. That is not, that is, uh, look, look, look. <laughs> Why rehash ancient history? We all made mistakes when we were young, especially you. I never banged any of your girlfriends that I recall. Because you were too stoned. And Anyway, look, look, these are serious times, Rick. Okay, we've got to put aside our personal problems and do what we do best. You know what I do best nowadays? Hang up. Don't do it for me, Rick. Do it for Rita. For Rita? <laughs> now, she hasn't been feeling that great lately. She has a little fever and a, a cough, and she's worried. She's been tested? We're waiting for the result. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure she's, she's fine. Yeah, I'm sure, too. She's very tough. Yeah, tell me about it. She kicked my ass many a time. This has been a very helpful distraction for her, though, putting the benefit together, you know, so it would be great if you... Yeah, 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 sure. Like, you know, I, I, I have to think about it. Yeah, do that. Strange times, huh? Strange times. The whole band. Yep. Even Ludwig. <laughs> Especially Ludwig. They had some kinky jam sessions. It's on Kindle. Yeah. Look, um, I gotta go. Happy reading. Cheap bastard. Dystopia, dystopia. <sighs> Wow, bandmates, that was awesome. Great job, Max. Great job. John. Way to go, Max.
Now, uh, we've got Steve Bad Patton. Steven, you wrote that uh, wonderful scene between these two gentlemen. How, how do you yeah. think they pulled it off? You pleased with your way your words were brought to life? Well, first of all, I, I, I was brought in not knowing who was going to act the piece out. I mm -hmm. just kind of came up with it, kind of based and inspired from my experience as a stage manager where you're meeting these rock and roll bands. And, you know, from my end, I'm, I'm stuck trying to answer the great question, why are these rich white guys so mad? And <laughs> so as I'm moving these people around, it's like, okay, really? Like what, you know, cause then there's like the, you know, this one doesn't want to talk to that one and eye contact and all this, but anyway, yes. <laughs> so my past experience as a stage manager is kind of what inspired the bit. I originally wrote it for like, like, uh, cause I had British people in my head for some reason, but I think, I think Fred or somebody was like, uh, yeah, it's not going to be British guys, Steve, relax. <laughs> so, you know, and then when I found out it was Superman dad and Wojohowicz, I was like, get the f out of here. Are you serious? Like, okay. All right. Bet. I, I went to, I went to a bar. I started bragging about it and shit. It was crazy. Um, but That's yeah, you know, I, I'm very happy about what happened to be honest. Yeah, I think it turned out great. And, and you know, you wouldn't know it from looking at it, but the scene was actually not shot one on one. They were shot separately and edited together, stitched together by David Levin. And I think that's the sign of some pretty good performer chops. I have to tell you, logistically, OK, when you're not paying anybody. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. What? Yeah. When <laughs> did I say that out loud? Um, <laughs> Uh, when when you're doing it for charity and people are donating their own time and make and scheduling so that you can get everybody together, and even though everybody's sort of sitting at home, John Schneider, by the way, is never he's sitting there right now. He's editing a movie. Okay, John is the hardest working man in COVID. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's the hardest working man in showbiz. Now it's the hardest working man in COVID. John said, yeah, I can do it, but I'm not sure when. And I'm like, well, you got to be together. He's like, no, way, no, we're good. And he did the whole thing in one take to the camera with nobody responding to him. And then it was up to me with my great acting chops to act opposite Max and to feed him his lines. Um, and Maxwell was so good uh at responding and he had watched what what john did and responded to what he had seen and i cut them together it was seamless um, well, you're just saying that because we're both here wait till <laughs> wait till you're gone john then we'll talk about you behind your back well then i won't know will i but okay <laughs> all right all right you two break it up go to your separate corners max uh, how did it feel for you to uh, to perform that scene well, it was uh, interesting, you know, because there were two things went on. Also, I was in my van at the time, and the the the, the, um, the Wi-Fi wasn't as strong, so we just made that part of it. But um, so we were dealing with that. But you know, at, at first, I I, I missed uh, just being able to work it with John, but he had it, you know, laid out. It was very clear. He had given a thought to it. You know, it was two guys who who knew each other could kind of finishes each other's sentences, maybe with an eye roll, you know? Uh, uh, so, you know, it was just a kind of falling into that. Um, and then uh, um, patience on the other side. We all had to kind of upgrade our, our Wi-Fi during the early days of viral vignettes. But I, you know, I just want to say, I, I, I agree with John that it's a wonderful a potential here, just as I think many people have found while they're eager to see each other. A lot of gatherings, you know, I, I, I participate with a composer's breakfast that's been a wonderful, lively uh, gathering, you know, and it's been on Zoom, it's found other dimensions. We get to see each other in a different way and stuff. So I think the same thing is true with this, exploring this way of uh, working together. By the way, Barry did a wonderful, amazing job on a movie we did here called One Month Out a couple of years ago and that that whole film was was uh, threatened to be never seen because we had two disastrous floods here in 2016 oh my god but, uh, painstakingly recovered both picture and sound uh, over the last couple of years and uh, if you don't if you haven't had the chance to see it yet uh, we are truly independent here so you can go to cineflixdod.com 
to uh, to rent it. We don't uh, we don't pretend to want to make a deal with any of the big boys. We're not interested because we are independent. We don't like anybody telling us what we can or can't do uh, cinematically or, or uh, with our storyline. So check it out one month out at cineflixdod.com. Uh, and you can also see our, our fun our fun tribute to Smoking the Bandit. It's called Stand On It. Check that out as well. <laughs> it's about time somebody did a tribute to Smoking the Bandit. You know, <laughs> we need this Southern, we call it Southern Horsepower Comedy. Thanks, John. You're John welcome, Barry. Yeah, John, you did it. Now, if you could only figure out, John, how to put something on the window behind me so it, you know, balances out the foreground and the back. I didn't have any gel. And I know that if I, if this was the movie you were making, you would have done this. Yeah, but look at that. What do you have there? Certainly you had tinfoil somewhere in your kitchen. Oh. Well, but that's yeah. just tacky. Well, yeah. <laughs> tinfoil? What's your point? Where do you live in Van Nuys? <laughs> I'm sorry. This is my little editing, my little editing room. No, it's a Barry. You have a halo. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's not oh, believable, you. but you have one. Thank you, thank you, John Schneider. Max, anything you want to promote that you're working on these days that we should know about? Uh, no, because the, whatever that is, I, I hope it's something, but, uh, you know, uh, so I, I'm always working on the notion of, you know, dialogue, a conversation with a center instead of sides and all that. So, you know, to that, to that spirit, because uh, we got all these problems in our lap, and the solutions are there too. You know, if we think together, we can figure them out. And one of those is just, I uh, would like to really just encourage people to, to, to donate something to the actor's home. You know, none of us know whether uh, or when we might end up there, uh, but I think for people who have that sense of appreciation of theater, they, you know, acting, uh, storytelling, you know, it, it takes an audience. It takes someone to receive and respond and, and you know, that's what completes the circle. And so uh, I'm sure that, you know, someone you love is there or will be there. And uh, so if you, you know, are motivated by our effort, to create something, please, please, uh, you'll feel good about yourself and the world. Thank you very much for that. Donate to the Actors Fund. Real nice, heartfelt message from Maxwell Gale, and uh, Steve Van Patten. What are you? What are you writing these days? Well, um, as usual, I'm working on my short horror stories, uh, a couple of novels, and things like that. So, I mean, <laughs> when I'm not doing comedy for these two guys, uh, I'm <laughs> normally trying to scare people, as you can probably <laughs> tell from the montage. <laughs> behind me so uh yeah that's my thing and uh anyone who wants to know more about that can visit www.laughingblackvampire.com <laughs> and, and also you steve uh you got you've got your uh, podcast you should mention that. that's true i do have a podcast which is why i have this lovely thing beef wine and shenanigans we talk horror science fiction uh, and that sort of thing. Beef, wine, and shenanigans. It's a lot of fun. Yes. Although I think at first, at this point, we should apologize to the Van Nuys Chamber of Commerce for any comments. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Uh, let's turn now to David and Fred and talk to them about the, uh, the origin, the origin story of viral vignettes. How did it come to be, guys? How did this thing happen anyway? It's really wonderful. We, the, the, the pandemic has had just begun the shutdown. Everybody was sort of at home. And I really wanted to do something and Zoom was just sort of coming on board. So I thought, why not put it to some good use? And I gave Fred a call and Fred said, yeah, let's play. Basically, we were trying to do something about the situation that we were all in, but we also wanted to make it, we wanted to avoid getting deep into the, uh, the situation itself. We didn't want to talk about COVID. We didn't want to talk about all the problems that were going on. And we also wanted not to, to be political. We're trying to avoid that. We wanted something that everybody could watch without sort of getting really, uh, we wanted to take them away from the situation, but also give them something to relate to. You know, we were all living our lives, but we were all thrust into this place. Where we we're all sitting at home and the only way to see other people was over the internet and the only way to communicate, but their lives are still going on. There's still things happening in their lives that they needed to talk about and we recruited a bunch of writers, then just started dancing as fast as we could to try to get one out every single week. I called Douglas uh, Ramirez at the Actors Fund 
uh, because we wanted to give people a reason to say yes to doing this. We wanted to give the actors a reason to say yes. And Doug Ramirez at the Actors Fund really helped hook us up. He gave us a, a page where, which people should go to now and make a donation and also helping us to promote it and gave us some credibility right away. And we were shooting within two weeks with our first one. I think it was, it was David's, uh, he had this brilliant perception that everybody's doing these Zoom calls and technically it doesn't matter what it looks like or who, because theoretically the person is shooting himself. So it didn't matter where they were standing. It didn't matter, you know, what, how the focus was or anything, as long as, you know, it gave the, the, uh, the impression that they were actually having this conversation over phone. And it, it's, it made things so much easier. The fact that, you know, you could start shooting, you could write a script and start shooting the next day. And basically, as long as you had your cast together, and you know, David was working working magic behind the scenes with his editing stuff. But for the most part, it was just that easy, and um, it, it made us move. We get we were in production so much faster than it would have been if we'd gone to Netflix. No waiting for green lights. Yeah, well, it's so great. I think I'm a great believer in being proactive with your creativity and just kind of bypassing all the stops and just moving forward the path of least resistance. And when you work with creative people, that's that's a very easy uh, undertaking. Thanks for letting us know all about the origins of viral vignettes. And uh, now let's move on. Hi, I'm Matt and I'm a writer. You know, thousands of people in the entertainment industry have no source of income right now because of the pandemic. A lot of us live gig to gig so that we can do this and hopefully get a few of these. So it's really scary when we don't know when our next paycheck's gonna come. But we have the Actors Fund, which exists for everyone in entertainment during times of financial crisis. So if you can donate any amount at all, please do help us keep the entertainment industry alive and well for everyone to enjoy. So our next uh, viral mm -hmm. vignette is uh, called Tooth Fairies in Quarantine, and it stars Barry, Yvonne, mm -hmm. and it's written by Kurt. Uh, Barry, you're yes. with us. And we can hear yes. you, and that's great. And what did uh, what was your experience working on Tooth Fairies in Quarantine? Uh, I I was very drunk, and uh, <laughs> and that helped a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, in <laughs> fact, I don't know. Was this the first one I did for you, David, or the second one? I, I, all I know this is was this was actually the very first one that we shot. Uh, we shot this. It, less than two weeks after everything, it was like if the, everything shut down on March 13th, we shot this before the end of March in 2020. Oh my God. Wow. I must not have had anything to do that Thursday at four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and Yvonne, Yvonne, perhaps uh, perhaps you were more motivated by some altruistic. Uh, <laughs> no, I. Daring. I decided since Barry was doing it that I had to get off the floor like that was stand up take David's call get off the I, I couldn't even get off the floor at that point it was so hard mm. like that point in the quarantine mm -hmm. but um wait a minute you were on the floor I thought it's no, because I, was you're so happy to me. work with me that I just sort of knocked you out you did knock me out no I, I took oh, oh back. okay so and what, you made me want to drink you, oh, well. <laughs> no, um, I was really excited to work with Barry and I was really, uh, it was hard to get off the floor. Well, let's talk to the writer, Kurt Fried. Yeah. Kurt, uh, this is based, uh, am I right? Is this based on a book that you've written? Well, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I have a children's book uh, called Tooth Fairies and Jetpacks. And, uh, you know, when the, obviously this is right as everything is happening and I'm realizing, you know, looking at the the couple of of these viral vignettes that I wrote, that it's that you can almost see me trying to process what's happening because I have two children as well, and they've you know been through this, and you know trying to figure out how do you talk to them about what's going on, and you know what you know, what do you even say when you're trying to deal with all of this yourselves, and just the exhaustion, uh, you know that that all of the parents are going through. I mean, I. Um, somewhat lucky in that my kids are a little bit older and you know are more self-sufficient and had a somewhat easier time of somewhat easier time of adjusting to all of this but you know just yeah you know, I, I loved this opportunity of, of trying to exercise you know this the script was almost like like a little bit of therapy for me trying to to deal with everything that was happening 
Yeah, excellent. Let's take a look at Tooth Fairies in Quarantine, shall we? And then we'll come back and talk about what the experience was like. Tooth Fairies in Quarantine. Are you okay, Dad? What's wrong? Why are you up so late? Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I'm I'm just catching up on my backlog of drinking scotch. How are you? How are the kids? You look like hell. Thank God. It's really hard to keep your sanity and looks at this time. So, um, thanks for that. Okay, anytime. Plus, there's the goddamn tooth fairy. Who? The tooth fairy. I had the kids in bed. I did all that distance learning shit and dishes and whatever. And then Aiden pulls out this right as I was walking out the door. Oh my God, that's a tooth. <laughs> yeah, I guess he was so bored he was yanking it on it all day long. You know, there are worse things he could have been yanking on. Dad. All right, here's, here's what you do. You put a quarter under the pillow. A quarter? Yeah. A quarter wasn't even enough when I was a kid. It's like five bucks now. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. That's, that, that's crazy. You need a tooth fairy loan? I'll pay pal you the, the money here. No, it's not the money. He wrote a what letter. He wrote this letter and... Wait a minute. Excuse me. Excuse me. Aiden can write. Yes, your grandson's literate. Well, maybe he could write me one. All right, Dad, don't yes. start with me. I don't have the bandwidth for this right now. I just need to get through the rest of the day. I, w I haven't had a chance to pee. I haven't had a chance to eat anything. I got them in bed. I was out of the door. And now hey, hey, hey. if I write hey, anything hey, or hey, go in the oh room, my. then the nightmare is going to start all over again. And Wait. I just, what? Will you calm what? down and just breathe for a minute? Come on, do it. Ready? Now have a scotch. I don't drink scotch. Well, there's your problem right there. See, if you drank scotch, you'd be so much better off. Yeah, maybe not. No, it puts everything in perspective. All right, Dad. Wait a minute. If the tooth fairy doesn't answer tonight, she can answer tomorrow night. <laughs> What's the diff? Uh, please write back ASAP. If I don't hear back, I will know you died or were eaten by a cat or got the virus and it's making you bark and sit on the potty all the time. And that will make me very, very sad. You know, that little shit is a real manipulator. And you... <laughs> And you are an enabler, my dear. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, no, wait a minute. I'm getting an idea here. I'm getting oh, an idea. Oh, Dad, Dad, you know what? Maybe huh? you could email him a note and answer the questions, and I'll just read it to him in the morning. No, that's too commonplace. We're talking about the tooth fairy here. She should do something, you know, really special. Like what? A video message. You want to do a video message from the Tooth Fairy? Well, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, everybody does it nowadays. It's the personal touch. People really respond to that. You know? Okay. But who's going to play the Tooth Fairy on the video? Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. No, no, no. Dad. I can just hey, get... I have been acting all of my life. In that... community yeah, no. theater. Community theater. Community theater is still theater. You know, I was in Hamlet. All right, all right. Read me some of the questions. Um, how do you fly? Jetpack. You have wings. You don't use a jetpack. You have wings. Why would you use a jetpack? The wings are decorative. Okay, 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 fine. <sighs> what do you do with the teeth? Necklaces. 
Necklaces? Yeah. Necklaces. You make necklaces out of the teeth? That's horrifying. You know, fairies have their own cultural touchstones, and who are we to comment on them and to criticize them in our arrogant way? Well, okay, okay. What do you think they, they do with it? I don't know. Science. Maybe they use them for science. Science? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Uh, they study teeth for uh, medicine. Hold on. Hold on. Now I'm getting into character. Okay, I'm getting into character. Okay, what's next? What's next? Go on. Go on. Uh, can you come play with me? Um, I'm lonely without my friends. Yeah, me too, kid. Me too. Dad. No, but it's true. See, I'm not going to fill the kids with this fairy tale bullshit. No, Dad. He's six. That's what he needs right now. He needs a fairy tale. So if you can't do that, then I don't want you to do this. Okay. Okay, I'll come up with something family friendly. All right, I have to prepare now to come up with some. I want a kind of foundation I should use. I wish your mama here, but she would know exactly what I what I what I'm looking for here. You know what, Dad? You uh, don't have to do this. You can just relax. I know. You know what? I think I should come up with some kind of lighting, huh? And maybe no, Dad. Ah, Dad, you don't I, have hold, to do hold, this. Hold, just hold. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I am going to fly. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to get some kind of rigging that's going to fly me out of the freight. I'm going to fly, baby. Dad. Fly. Dad. Dad, Dad, relax. You don't have to do this. I don't. Ha I don't have to do anything. I just. I just want. I want to. This is fun. Hello there, Aiden. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Aiden. Hello, Aiden. <laughs> Aiden. Aiden. No, no, that's not right. I'm, I wish I could be more like. I think maybe Dad? they're missing some missing some teeth. Yeah, I think the tooth fairy doesn't have any teeth in the back. Hey, hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Dad. Dad. Yes. yes. He's going to know it's you. How can you know it's just me? <laughs> I don't talk like this normally. This is Hello there. <laughs> Hey, listen, I'm going to see you tomorrow, and I'm going to have wings, wings on. <laughs> and no teeth. Okay, I love you, Bye, buddy. bye, 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 bye. Hello there, Aiden. Thank you so much for leaving me your tooth. I'm talking to you from my office at Tooth Headquarters in Fairyland. <laughs> I get special permission to fly around during quarantine because we study teeth for science. We are definitely not walking around wearing necklaces of human teeth. That's gross. But I want you to know that you are surrounded by family that loves you. But don't forget that cool grandfather of yours. He may be far away, but he loved you so much. And if you ever feel lonely, you could always talk to him. Or write him a letter. <clears throat> or write him a letter. Okay, just need to turn on my jetpack here. <laughs> Goodbye. That grandpa. And that was amazing. Two fairies in quarantine, what a fantastic team. Uh, I, I have some behind the scenes. Uh, yeah, we want the dirt. <laughs> yeah.
So nothing about Barry. Don't worry. Don't okay. panic. But um, we actually, I uh, enlisted my younger son, who was 11 at the time. I got his actual tooth. Ah. And we spent quite a bit of time trying to create the blood on the tissue. And he wrote the tooth fairy note. So it was oh. it was uplifting for him because, boy, were my kids in the dump. So it actually was educational well, I gotta <laughs> and ask, fun for them. I got to ask, what did you use for the blood? <laughs> oh, <I'm not> <laughs> <laughs> we're all we're all doing our own I'm special sorry. effects. <laughs> David. Yeah. David, you saved that piece for me because you did all the hand puppetry at the end, right? So I will tell you that the hand puppetry uh, was, um, the puppet was created by my six-year-old daughter. And she also made a little cameo at the end there. Uh, she was the child who said, is that grandpa at the end? Um, and it was really funny because we, we did the hand puppet in front of a green screen and Barry's and Barry sort of stepped away from his camera so we could put it in front of his background and we did that sort of little special effect. And when Barry saw it, he goes, how did you get into my house? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, it was and it was it was really funny. It was the second one we posted, I believe, but it was the first one we shot. It was a great learning experience. Um, I have to tell you that, um, well, working with every single person here has been one of the honors of my life, uh, working with Barry and Yvonne and the, the chemistry that developed between the two of them. And I think they will agree as it went on, you really believed those two characters in a way that was just wonderful. Well, thank you. I, I just got drunker and drunker. I believed it. <laughs> I believed every yeah. word. I had so much fun. I had so much I did fun working too. with you. Yeah, it was it was great. We 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 belonged together. I mean, daughter and whatever. Oh, oh, oh yes, yes. Yeah, get up off the floor, okay? Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, try. Yvonne, Yvonne, what are you uh, what are you working on these days? What where were we? Uh, well, nothing much let's see what am i working on i'm probably going to actually do a horror film or a suspense film hopefully later in the summer that um, my husband anthony will be directing so i cast myself in it uh hopefully hopefully anthony, your, your husband anthony for... anthony Ruvavar. yeah Oof. yeah so um and then what else i did a few more uh i things like this that were really fun, like monologue, online monologue contests and things like that, that were, that allowed me to connect with people. Nice. Um, so, but, you know, definitely limited, limited. Yeah, well, it seems to be picking up more and more. So I'm sure you'll yeah. be very, very busy soon. Barry, uh, do I dare ask what you're up to and what you've got planned? No, no, you can ask me. I just got back from Montreal this last weekend and that's a miserable place. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to say, you know, the place was uh, shut down. There's no vaccine up there. I had to go two weeks in quarantine in some Fakakta apartment. And, uh, and, and, then, uh, and then the whole town uh, went on. Uh, everything had to leave the streets at 8 o'clock at night. So they're not happy in Montreal at the moment. Yeah. Um, I was happy because I had a job. And I, it was a Netflix movie, Christmas movie called um, Single All the Way. And it's, uh, it's a rom-com uh, between two guys, my son and his roommate. And it's going to be quite interesting because it follows all of the structure of a male-female heterosexual rom-com. But it's, uh, it's my son and his roommate, who I won't tell you the ending, but... Uh, and uh, Michael Yuri uh, plays my son. He's a very talented guy. And, um, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, other people who, uh, uh, who I can't remember at the moment because I left them over the weekend and uh, <laughs> that's the way my mind works. Are you, are you drinking, Barry? Are you not drinking? at the moment. Uh, oh, lemonade. Okay. I, not okay. just only lemonade. I'm on the East Coast. I got about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the alarm go off and then it'll be I did a lot of drinking in Montreal though I gotta tell you that <laughs> that two-week quarantine yeah God, I tell you. their beer is stronger right 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great. No, but it was it was a good job. And uh, Michael Mayer, who's a Broadway director, I directed it, and uh, it was uh, it's very sweet and it's uh, it's clever. It's very clever. It's, it's a Netflix Christmas movie, and uh, I don't have to play Santa, so which is which is great. Usually, I play Santa in Christmas movies. <laughs> well. That's great. And Kurt Freed, are you working on more books along the same line or perhaps from other projects? Uh, nothing coming out at the moment, but uh, yes, Tooth Fairies and Jetpacks is available on uh, Amazon, all your uh, local booksellers. Um, <clears throat> but um, no, plenty in the works, but nothing coming out anytime soon. I just want everybody to be uh, thinking about uh, donating to the Actors Fund, and uh, it's a it's a great uh, charity. and. Uh, Great need. Thank you. Well, let's talk to some of the actors now about uh, the challenge of filming a viral vignette, either with your phone or your laptop, you know, and arranging for all the sets and the makeup and wardrobe yourself. We've got Renee Taylor, legendary Renee Taylor. It's so great to see you. You look fantastic. Are you you're in Manhattan, are you? Yes, I am. Right across the street from Lincoln Center. Oh, how lovely. And what's the weather like today in Manhattan? I got to know. So warm. I had to open all the windows. Wow. Wow. Now, when you shot your viral vignette, uh, Ms. Taylor, did you have to shoot it on your laptop? Did you have any help uh, doing it? Uh, how did you manage it? No, I shot it on my laptop. I do a lot of things on my laptop. I'm working on a play right now about Mae West, and I'm working on a uh, Zoom on my laptop. It's difficult when you're doing intimate scenes to do it on your laptop. But if you're just doing home scenes with people, I think it's easy. Yeah, it's it, it hasn't been that long when the phrase do it on your laptop meant something completely different than it does today. <laughs> did you uh, get to rehearse at all? We did, and we rehearsed with David. That's always fun. We tried it this way, we tried it that way. We had mm -hmm. a lot of fun. And then don't forget we tried it the other way too. Oh, the other, I forgot the other. This yeah, back yeah. The other. I wrote, I wrote the, the one that I did with Renee. And I'll just say at one point, there was a line in there where I said, where Renee had to be, had to say the words, are you crazy? Which is basically your signature line, Renee. Are you crazy? Yeah. I'm always saying, are you crazy? So I said, Renee, I need a classic Renee. She goes, she goes, oh, okay. You want line reading 723. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just perfect. Can I ask a question? Yeah. How do you direct something like this? Uh, uh, what, what is the process of directing something online like this on Zoom? First of all, casting. Okay. If you cast it correctly, the rest is a breeze. For you and for Yvonne, for example, or for you and for Fred, for example, it was just it was just massaging a little bit. In your case, you found your character very easily. And really, if, if, if it was anything, it was just it was just sort of bringing you in a little bit and just saying, okay, let's just, let's just reduce it. You know, you it, it got, as we went further, and in your particular case with Yvonne, you guys did a lot of improvisation, which was so much fun. And then at a certain point, just as the director, I just needed to ask you to just bring it, bring it in a little bit, uh, to bring it back to reality. Are you saying I was overacting? I think that's what he said. No, it was, it was, oh, yeah, it was, okay. it was, it was, it was, it was, it was Yvonne that was really just. Well, just that's completely... what I thought too. You know, <laughs> you so know. really the best to answer Barry's question. The best Never direction off the to just say is to just say don't overact, and that that's really the best direction we can provide as directors. Yeah. So, of course, all of these uh, viral vignettes are benefiting the Actors Fund, which is a very magnanimous organization, that, a charity that supports all different aspects of uh, the performing arts. So not just the actors and not just the, uh, um, the people that are singing on stage, but also the people that are giving tickets and making the theatrical environment uh, such as it was and such, it will, as such as it will be a comfortable place and a healthy place and an artistic place to be. And they have... Uh, they successfully uh, contribute to a lot of different organizations and charities below them as well. So the, when you contribute to the Actors Fund, you're actually uh, possibly giving to a lot of different organizations. Uh, the one thing that we know is that they uh, take good care to make sure that the money you donate is actually spent in a charitable way and not just for overhead. 
Well, I want to say about the Actors Club that when I was a young actress just starting out about film film years ago, maybe over 60 years ago, uh, I had holes in my shoes and someone told me, go to the Actors Fund and they'll give you money for a pair of shoes. And that's what they did in those days. Wow. You would go there and you got shoes. And so I was about 19 and I was very grateful to get a pair of shoes. That's nice. Now, and you have one of those I, shoes right here. It's, it's, <laughs> thank no, you for they were shoes wrong. with heels, actually. Shoes with heels. <laughs> now, um, I have known some people who were destitute actors and actually a couple of people very well known. And I told them to go to the Actors Fund and get money so they could survive. And the Actors Fund was very generous with them. And that's how they, that's how they got by. Wow. That's, well, there you go. It really, they really do provide. That's wonderful. There, there's plenty of times in an actor's career when uh, you don't have enough to, uh, to make costs and to get uh, new clothes and the things that you need. So uh, a thing like the Actors Fund, a charity like that, uh, is a very necessary support item. Anybody else had any actual personal experience with the Actors Fund? Everyone here is too successful, I think. I have. Um, they actually, there was one year where I didn't qualify for Equity's healthcare. And um, I'd been using Equity Healthcare for years. And I really had never had to go through the marketplace and was super terrified, didn't know what to do. Went to the Actors Fund and they walked me through it. Um, I have my health and dental for like 35 bucks. I don't have to pay a, um, I don't have to pay a fee when I go to the doctor. My medication is $1. They really found me an amazing um, situation. And I'm very grateful to them. Absolutely. It was a moment in time a year ago when we were all sort of locked up and didn't know what the future would bring. And we we're in better times now than we were then. We were very happy to do it because the Actors Fund supported us to make this happen creatively uh, so that we could support them. Um, and, and they gave us help in terms of uh, helping us publicize this. So if you're watching this today, uh, whether you're watching it live or whether you're watching it uh, on a replay, um, please give to the Actors Fund because it's even just a little bit helps a lot of people. Yeah, it's a great way to give back to some performers who maybe you've enjoyed for years and years. I'm actually in the Midwest right now. Um, and it's just really, I think people, you know, if you're in New York or LA and you're in the theater or movie industry, you know how up and down it goes. You can be wildly successful and then totally destitute for years and years and, and not know how you're gonna pay your rent or your mortgage or whatever. And I think people have this sort of misconception what it's like to be an actor and um, how, how erratic it is and how much we depend on each other for support. And especially during the pandemic, I think, you know, people think, oh, it's just fun and whatever. Uh, but look how much everybody turned to television and Netflix and everything. Like we're a vital part of the world and it's not an easy packet, <laughs> so. Well said, well said. Next, we're gonna move on to a viral vignette that is called Prom Night, and it stars Adam Langdon and Emma Fitzer Price. It was directed by Jenny Leona and was written by Fred Stropel. with you yes oh s are you doing homework uh no red dead too with who uh aiden brooks Allie. nerd patrol uh no <laughs> you are the nerd <laughs> no you oh very good comeback bored <laughs> well you and the rest of humanity. God, I can't believe we lost our whole senior year. Um, 
Not all of it. But we lost all the best parts. We lost all the good stuff, like the senior trip and the senior play and just all the parties and the hanging out. And, well, we still have to do all that online distance learning crap. I don't think it's that bad. It's a waste. We already got into college, and it's like they just want to keep us busy so we don't go outside and actually enjoy ourselves. I don't know if I'll ever enjoy myself ever again. <laughs> That's just, it's so cringe. <laughs> oh, you are mine. Yeah. Is that a first shooter game? You know, first shooter games can turn you into a sociopath. I am already a sociopath. And it's a third-person shooter, so it's totally safe. Okay, so are we going to work on this? Milo, come on, it's due on Monday. So let's do it Sunday night. No, let's just get it done now. We're here. Okay, <sighs> um, so do you think Tess was raped by Alec Duberville, or was she a willing participant? I don't know. Because she was supposedly asleep, but then she hangs out with him for a couple of months after that, which suggests that... Ambivalence. Yeah, uh, write that down. Okay, uh, I'll write it down. I mean, the baby dies anyway, so it's kind of a moot point. Damn it. Can you turn that off, please? Um, no. God, Milo, this is a college credit course. I really can't fail it. You're not gonna fail. You're the friggin' teacher's pet. I am not. You are. You've been kissing her ass all semester. You know she's gonna take care of you. You're a jerk. Uh, no, you are. Ooh, good comeback. <laughs> God, I can't believe I'm partnered with you. I could have done this twice as fast by myself. So, do that. It's supposed to be a team effort. Whatever. I'm gonna get this guy and take all his money. Milo! <sighs> Taking a break, guys. Be back soon. You happy? You know... We've just worked so hard the past four years. We lost everything else. I mean, the least we can do is uphold our own personal standards. No offense, Shannon, but your personal standards are not my personal standards. I personally do not give a crap about grades or college credits or friggin' tests of the Dior Bur -Bur -Bur -Burs because... Oh. It's just a waste, like I said. I don't want to just drift, Milo. I want to feel connected. You know what day it is? Uh, I'm not really aware of what month it is. May 29th. Virtual prom. 8 o'clock. Virtual prom. I forgot, but that is so cringe. You are cringe. Are you going? No. <laughs> Why not? You and Gabe will show up and be named King and Queen. Screw Gabe. Gabe can suck my ass. Um, okay, why is that, pray tell? He's going with Courtney. Uh, to the prom? Yeah. What happened? You guys were... I don't- I really don't want to talk about it. Okay. He zumped me. What? Zumped me. He dumped me on Zoom. What a dick. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Are you going? Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I asked Sierra, she was not into it, and immediately friend-zoned me. Harsh. I don't really care. Well, why don't you just go by yourself? Uh, because that's totally cringe. It's virtual! Who gives a shit? Uh, why don't you go by yourself? I'm not- I'm not going. Okay, then. 
We're gonna get cheated out of our graduation, too. That means something to you? Well, yeah, I was gonna get an award. Oh, of course, a valedictorian. No, Courtney's getting that. Really? You're like way smarter than her. If I was smarter than her, Gabe would still be with me. Well, Gabe... Gabe has no taste. He was with me for two years! Uh -huh, yes. But, um, I, I am, I am on your side. I am just saying that you are better than her in every conceivable way. So just like, don't sweat it. Are you coming on to me? No. Because don't. <laughs> I already friends on you. Oh, I don't know about that. I believe <laughs> I was the one who friend-zoned you first. Oh, <laughs> no. I, oh, certainly did. Freshman oh. year. <laughs> um, that's, uh, I'm, uh, I, I really, I really just need to call bullshit on that one. Oh, bullshit. Uh, I think you are bullshit. This, no. <laughs> okay, um, great comeback. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I was just wondering, are we are we gonna work on this or not? Because otherwise, I, I... so did you get a dress for prom? Uh, yeah, I, I bought something, but it, it's not really fancy. Well, I mean, put it on. Don't be a perv. Yep. I know, and but not a perv, but we we can have our own prom. What? Yeah. Um. What if we had our own private, only for rejects, virtual prom? <laughs> just you cringe. and me. That is very cringe. <laughs> no, it isn't. Are you sure you're not coming on to me? Go get dressed. <laughs> and I'll put something on. And I'll meet you right back here in half an hour. Okay, we good? <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. Why not? God, you are such a nerd. And proud of it. Hey! Va va boom! Okay, shut up, my love. No, I mean, like, you look great. So do you. Uh. Uh, what? What is that music? Oh, this, this is, this is from the 50s. It's what they call vintage. Is that, uh, <laughs> that in the corner is that also vintage what is oh that? no this this is horrible yeah. this is my lucky cat lamp um my dad had it in college and loves to tell me how well he did with the ladies because of it oh i'll bet yeah, yeah i yeah. believe that yeah. <laughs> uh champagne mm. oh fancy uh coffee oh yeah, very fancy Cheers. Cheers. But seriously, you look great. You said that. Yes, I did. <laughs> Do you want to dance? Uh, yeah. Yeah, why not? Okay. <laughs> you know. I, don't, I don't really know how to dance to this music. <laughs> Ooh, the hair flip? Oh, yeah. I can't okay. do that. See, my hair doesn't move at all. <laughs> oh. oh, wait, what was that? Uh, it's just my, my friends. They want me to play. Oh, go ahead. This this is really silly anyway. No, no, no. Should play um, I, I would rather be doing this. Hanging out with the prom queen. How long have we gone to school together, Milo? Um, I guess like 12 years. Thir 13 with kindergarten. 
I, I don't think I really have gotten to know you, though. I'm, I'm just a nerd. No, I am just a nerd. <laughs> Gabe is an idiot. So is Sierra. Yeah. Do you want to crash the virtual prom? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. As friends? Yeah. <laughs> And that was prom night. Very enjoyable. Uh, we haven't talked to Emma yet. Emma, what was your experience like filming your viral vignette? This this came in a really interesting moment um, because I was in my senior year at Juilliard. So we, you know, all of our classes were online. We were doing it like this over Zoom. Um, but thankfully, by that point, everything had sort of turned industry and we were doing less theater oriented work. So. Um, when Jenny reached out to me about this project, I was so thankful to just get to do a one act essentially and um, and then use everything that we were learning in these Zoom classes about like framing myself and kind of having to be my own my own director and my own costume designer and um, uh, doing my own lighting, my own audio. Um, all of that could come into play, but I was getting to work on text that really hit home and that felt like it belonged someday in a in a theater. Jenny, Leona, you uh, you directed this? I did direct it. Um, oh. And uh, it was, I haven't directed much, but I was very excited to jump in. And I had known Emma and Adam through the sort of uh, Juilliard connection. I just knew that she was a great, hardworking actor. And I knew she would just be game. They did a really good job. They jumped in and jived really well together really quickly. It was great. Fred Stropple, how'd you come up with this idea of prom night? Well, my, my son uh, was a senior in high school at the time. And uh, he, like many of the kids, everybody in, who were seniors in high school at the time, they were being cheated basically out of their senior year, which when we look back, <laughs> that was a terrible thing to lose. You know, it was the time when you get to relax and enjoy everything you've accomplished. And instead, the whole thing had been stopped and and one of the things that uh everyone was talking about was that they weren't going to have any proms or anything and so it seemed like the perfect thing to write about at the time so after i wrote it of course david and i said okay we need two young actors do you know any young actors <clears throat> and david said no <laughs> originally i wanted originally i wanted barry and renee to play the high school students yeah. and, yeah. and you know no i had to talk you down from that you know? yeah yeah and yeah. thank goodness I would have did. overacted like crazy on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got Adam Langdon and Emma Fitzer Price. We have Emma here right now. Emma, what was the experience like for you? But yeah, and it was lovely to get to work with Jenny and Adam. I loved working with Adam. He did uh, the national tour of Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. And I knew the moment I read the script that he was the right person for this role. You know what I loved about it? Can I say something? You know, I loved I loved the fact the fact that it it you'd never know you didn't know where it was going. It surprised you every minute or two, and and also I loved the way uh, it, the uh, young man would deflect. He deflected so much of his thoughts in profile and so much of his feelings in profile that when he finally turned to the camera, it was very very powerful, and the and 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 that connection just happened instantly. Now, I thought it was a wonderful piece. Um, one of the best, David, I must say. And I didn't even go to Juilliard. Well, my, it, it was actually, it was my wife's favorite piece of all of them. So yeah. kudos to all of you. Thank you to everybody that made prom night. So uh, it's so wonderful to watch. And thank you at home watching. And uh, we hope that you, of course, will consider making a donation to the Actors Fund. Any amount would be very helpful. 
Hi, I'm Lo, a music producer, artist, and songwriter, and I have one simple question for you. Can you imagine a world without entertainment? If your answer is no, then please consider donating to the Actors Fund today. It helps industry professionals across the entertainment industry stay afloat during uncertain times like these. And the truth is, we could really use your help now more than ever. So donate now, and remember, every little bit helps. Let's go on to the next. We've got a uh, next viral vignette. This was uh, Barry Bostick again and Fred Malamed, and it is called Jack's Inferno. Let's check it out. How the hell are you? Jack, Jack, I'm good. I'm really good. How about you? How are you? Good. Well, you know, it depends. It depends. Do I still got some money left? <laughs> Listen, I'm telling the same thing to, to all of my clients. This is a very volatile situation we have going on here in the market. The absolute best thing we could do is to just uh, sit tight, relax, sit on our money. Neil, 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 stop, stop. I'm not calling to yell at you, all right? just want to find out how the hell you are. You're not calling to yell at me? Mm-mm. Not even, like, a little bit? No, no, no. You already moved my money to all around. I don't know where. You, you're a genius at that. I, I'm just asking, how the hell are you? My God, you don't know how relieved I am to hear you say that, to actually be able to talk to a, another human being, you know, without the fear of hearing sobbing at the end or threats against my person or something. Ah, come oh, on, you know, <laughs> I know, I know. Hey, hey, Neil, stressful times, right? Got to find the joy in life. Hmm? You're right. You know what, Jack? You're absolutely right. You are. I, I, I've been like so, so tough on myself. It's ridiculous. Shouldn't be so hard on myself, right? I, I mean, I can't be, I, I, I can't be responsible for everything. Isn't that correct? I mean, I mean, I, th this whole thing is crazy. The world has gone nuts. Who, who could plan for anything even like this? Financial planners? Now that's a joke, Neil. Kidding. Sorry. It's just, you know, even though I'm here alone, I, I feel like I've never had one single moment's peace. It's been so crazy. You know what, Neil? Take up a hobby, like me. Tequila. Well, you know, to tell you the truth, there is this one, this one thing, this one kind of dream I've had that, I, that I've started to, to, to pursue. You know what? No one's stopping you, Neil. You know what it is? Hmm. Comedy. You mean like stand-up? No, no, no. Like, like more, you know, classical comedy. Like, uh, like Italian poetry. You know, Dante. Ah, Dante. Right, exactly, Dante. You know, uh, the Divine Comedy, uh, you know, everything. Starting with the Inferno. Oh, yeah, the Inferno. That's a riot, huh? <laughs> wow. Well, you got a lot of time to read now, so. Uh, no, no, not reading it, not reading it. Actually, I'm translating it. Well, you, my friend, are a Renaissance man. I'm translating it into the form of limericks. Limericks. Dante's Inferno. Exactly. Look, there are so many translations that exist in that overblown, you know, classical style. I don't believe anybody has ever attempted a version based on limericks. Shocking. I know. It's a comedy, right? I mean, it's right there in the title. And tell me, what is funnier than a limerick? Nothing. And believe me, I know funny. Well, you're the master. All right, Jack, listen, could, could I read you some? I am not going to hang up until you do. All right. <clears throat> Dante went looking for Beatrice. On the way there, something felt amiss. He thought he could tell he had wound up in hell. Was she really worth passing through the abyss? Hmm. Yeah. So, by comedy, you actually mean... I mean, you know, actual comedy, more like, uh, you know, fundamental, ridiculous, philosophical comedy about how, how crazy the whole human situation is. Got it. Got it. Definitely. So it doesn't actually have to be funny. 
Uh, what do you mean? You, you know, well, you're just making the best of a bad situation, I see. Uh, you don't like it? No, hey, it's great stuff. I'm not saying that I, 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 I get it fully, but it's, it's great. It's, you're doing... Well, I mean, it's a more, you know, cerebral sort of humor. Exactly. No, maybe you like this one. Hang on. <clears throat> when Dante was facing his fears, to be trapped there for millions of years, abandon all hope, but Dante said nope, because Beatrice had heavenly spheres. Oh, yeah, I hey, know. Okay, okay, that one's hilarious. That's that's really good. That's uh. That's yeah, really see, funny. She, she, she's showing him the, the different the different spheres of paradise, but of course, spheres also means you know boobs. You know, it's even better when you explain it. Well, it's it's a double entendre, you know. <laughs> well, it's very risque. Really sucks, right? No, hey, Neil, please, I'm laughing, and I'm a very tough audience here. Look, you're you're the first person I've shared any of it with. You know what? Neil, it's great. Molte bene. No, no. No, no. You're right. You're absolutely right. And what the hell do I know about funny, right? Oh, wait a minute. Neil, don't do that. Who cares what I think? You know, whatever brings you... Oh, come on. Whatever brings you joy. Well, that's it. That's actually the problem. I think this whole thing has given me, well, a little too much joy. Well, in these times, Neil. In these times, I'm afraid I haven't been as as diligent at looking after the market as maybe I should have been, you know? Uh, what are you saying? Well, uh, you know, some of the trades that, that we had discussed uh, didn't actually uh, didn't actually get wind up getting executed in time, and now I think it's probably too late. You told me to sit tight. Yes, well, maybe not quite this tight. I mean, I think we should have opened up the sphincter maybe a little bit more. Well, should I be worried? No, 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 no. There's going to be bailouts. There's going to be lots and lots of bailouts. I didn't think I needed a bailout. Come on, Jack. Don't be silly. Who couldn't make use of a good bailout now and then, right? Neil, you're supposed to be handling my finances. I depend on you. Yes, in exactly the same way that, that, that Dante depends on Beatrice. I don't want to hear any more about this Beatrice shit and, and, and her heavenly tits. What about my money? Jack, it can't always be about you and, and your financial problems, you know? Yes, yes, yes it can. Uh, yes it can. I thought there was some Hippocratic oath that you guys swear to. That's for doctors. We, we never agreed to any such thing. Okay, so... I'm ruined. Is that what you said? Don't abandon all hope. Well, just how much hope should I abandon? Well, look, you know, hell has seven circles, right? I would say this is, at absolute worst, maybe a five. Oh, God. Jack, I have another confession to make. Oh, God, what? Well, there is one thing in the world that I like better even than Italian poetry. What, burning up all of my money? Practical jokes. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. Oh, man. Oh, oh the look on your face. Oh, unbelievable. Priceless. <laughs> <laughs> so my money's okay then, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I did everything we discussed. There's nothing more to be done. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You really got me, man. You got me. Cerebral humor, huh? Yeah, you see, I told you, I know funny. There's room in the world for, for comedy and money at the same time, right? So can I read you one more uh, limerick? No. Jackson. Brilliant. Great. Brilliant. Brilliant. Fred Melamed, welcome. That was your uh, your first foray into the viral vignettes, and uh, how was the experience for you? It was early on, as in my memory, relatively early on in the pandemic, and I was very happy uh, to be a part of it. 
to have something to, to worry about other than the state of my health and the world. And uh, I had never met Barry before, although I've been a fan for many years. Uh, and David and I go way back. And it was a really uh, significant amount of pleasure to do it, truthfully. Barry, uh, this, uh, this was, was this the second one you did or do you even remember? I don't know. I think maybe I think it's the second one. I think yeah. David said that uh, you I, that he wanted to use basically the same character, um, uh, and uh, and I said fine because I, that would be the the reason uh, that I, I I I well he taught me in the first one to not overact, <laughs> and, and so by the second one. I basically, I yeah. had it down. You had it down. I had it down, Pat. And <laughs> and Fred was unbelievable. Fred was so was so on top of it. And and as an and, example of overacting that you should avoid, you mean? And, <laughs> you you were wonderful, Fred. I have to say, extremely uh, I have to say, I didn't know who the hell you were, and uh, you know, and it was such a joy Thank to you. find out who you were, <laughs> which is which is. A superb actor, and I know who you were. Of course, I did. I'm just, I'm going to leave now. <laughs> I have to say that I, I told my son Fred that you were going to be on this Zoom thing. He's 18, and he's a movie guy, and we saw you in a doll's house too. And he's like, "Mom, you're actually a real actor if you <laughs> be on that thing." <laughs> That's <laughs> I, I've, I've got a similar thing with my, I have a son who's 18 and, you know, I've been around for a while and I was an Oscar nomination and all this stuff. And meanwhile, uh, so the fact that I'm in, in uh, the, the uh, Grand Theft Auto series, I put him on the map, put me on the map with my son's friends. They, they were so thrilled. You know, they made, I had a little appearance in, in that. I was like, Wait, hey. you mean WandaVision didn't count for anything? Well, WandaVision is kind of late in the in the you know latent things. That was only this this year. Kurt Freed wrote this one also. This is another one that you wrote. Where did this come from? Not from a children's book. <laughs> no, it was uh, you know it it's uh, again a couple months into the pandemic, and I'm I, I could looking at it again. I'm sort of in a different stage, and like, oh wow, it's we're all acting out these odd little hobbies that we all have, and all these things we we intended to do all this time. Now we're all finally getting around to doing them. And, and this was sort of an example of that, that this, this accountant would be, you know, translating Dante into limericks or like just all the weird things that people think of, you know, of doing that we have no idea about that's going on in everyone's heads. And I, you know, I sort of felt like this script was, was, was that for me as well. And I just want to say how, how honored and amazed I am at and having seen uh, you two uh, perform my words on, on screen, it's just, it's, a, it's an incredible feeling. And it turned out, you know, it's, it's just, it's so wonderful to see. I yeah. thought the, um, I thought the limericks were brilliant. I was so oh, thank you. And, and, you know, and, and Fred delivered them uh, Absolutely. with such simplicity and uh, guileless, no, that's not the right word. It should be pointed out that Kurt and I live in the same hometown, and we met on a bus. That's right. Uh, and I was, and he was writing a script. I'm like, there's a guy on a bus that I'm sitting next to writing a script. How random is that? And I had just moved into town, and so we got to talking, and then we got we gotten to know each other over the years. And I said, and so when it came time, and I was looking for script writers, and I knew that uh, Kurt was basically an aspiring script writer, and he had done some stuff, and but nothing that had been produced in this way. So this is Kurt's first produced work, that's, these two, these two right. sketches. Yeah, no, it's, it's astonishing to me. And both with Barry Bostwick. I'm uh, sorry, Kurt I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Kurt. This was your first and your last. <laughs> it's, it's entirely possible. <laughs> no, it's all because of my fault. I'm so sorry, Kurt. Don't I be discouraged had a great what, career. what Barry is saying. You're, the quality of the buses is going to get better and better you're going to ride in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. New no. yeah. a better class of people certainly <laughs> with each new bus yeah. yeah well that was jack's inferno and the people behind it and that was a lot of fun now let's go to this message all about the actors fund just to kind of clue you in on all the great things they do Fox 
Alex, I'm Brooke. And I'm Jonathan. And we met about 12 years ago performing in a show at Dolly Parton's theme park, Dollywood. Just like the rest of the entertainment industry, Dollywood is shut down right now and most of us have lost our income. And we are so grateful that the Actors Fund is there to help literally everyone in our business who's struggling right now. So please give to the Actors Fund. Anything you can give helps the entertainment industry. And our growing family. Our next video is Pass the Matzah. And it was written by David Levin, and it stars Renee Taylor and Michelle Green. And let's check it out. Hi, Mom. What's this I hear from Uncle Morty? You're canceling Passover. Are you crazy? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? We have never canceled Passover, Andrea. Never, never, never. Not during the acquisition. Not during the pogroms. Not during the plague of the locusts. The plague of the locusts was before Passover. Exactly. You proved my point. We are not canceling Passover. We're just looking into some other options. Forget options. We always have Passover at my house, and this year's no different. I've invited your cousins, and Edith is coming from Florida. Your brother is gonna finally show up for a change. Neil? You have another brother? I don't think Neil's gonna be there. Neil is a son who loves his mother. He'll be here, and so will you. I would love to be there. It's just not possible. Why not? You know why not. Oh, you're not buying the rumors, I hope. Mom, they are not rumors, okay? This is really serious. I don't believe it. I was out with Mrs. Silverstein this morning, and she said, we're not sissies. No, no, wait, wait. You went out? Just for coffee and a pastry. I had a lovely almond croissant with raspberries. Amazing. We used to go to Barney Greengrass, but they're so busy these days. Nobody goes there, it's too crowded. <laughs> you know who said that? Groucho Marx. Groucho Marx never missed a Seder, and neither will I. Groucho Marx did not say that. Yogi Berra said that. Yogi Berra was Jewish? Okay, look, Mom, I do not want you going out, okay? It's too dangerous. What do you know from dangerous? In my day, dangerous was stepping on a rusty nail. That was dangerous. This, ugh. Okay, I, I, I need you to understand this, okay? You are exactly the demographic for this disease. Demographic? You and your fancy marketing talk. I'm not kidding, it targets old people. So, let the old people worry. I'll be fine, I never get sick. You are always sick. Only when the seasons change. Look, you die when your number's up. Till then, you live. And I would like to keep it that way, okay? I would like for Sammy to grow up with a grandmother. Aw, how's my little princess? She's fine. She's uh, freaking out a little. Well, you tell her. Grandma has a special little something for her when she comes over for Seder. We are not coming for Seder. Yes, you are. My only daughter's not going to stand me up in front of her whole family. The whole family is not going to be there, Ma. You cannot have any visitors, okay? Not even Elijah. Not even Tess Silverstein. I have to celebrate Pesach alone? I... Oh, Mom, Mom, you're not going to be alone. You're going to be with us. I'm not schlepping to New Jersey for Seda. No, no, we're going to do it on Zoom. Zoom? What the hell is Zoom? Is it like this, schlep? No, this is, this is, <laughs> this is not called schlep. This is called Skype. And it's like Skype, but Zoom is bigger. You can have like 100 people signed on. What do I want with 100 people? How can I feed them? No, oh, they make their own food, Ma. You're gonna make the filter fish? <laughs> this I gotta see. I can cook, Mom. I can certainly make a filter fish. Ah, uh, you don't have the recipe. I'll get it online. From who? Betty Crocker? Sammy is just gonna eat pizza anyway. Pizza? And a Seder? 
No, we'll make it with a matzo crust. Don't worry. Well, what about the chicken soup? I got 27 jars of chicken soup in my freezer waiting for deliverance. Mom, in the near future, I hope, when we can all be together again, we will eat your chicken soup till we plot. But for now, that's not possible. I, I don't know, Andre. What about tradition? What about having your loved ones around you? 40 years in the desert, 2,000 years of persecution. And this is how we wind up zooming at each other? Crazy. Okay, mom, the Seder is always crazy, okay? Somebody has too much to drink. Somebody gets in a big fight. Somebody ends up canoodling with cousin Susie in the closet, right? Remember the time daddy lit the brisket on fire? Those were the days. So, Seder, Passover, it's always crazy. It's always different. And this year, it's just gonna be a little more different. You said it. Mom, we would love to have you with us, okay? I know this whole thing seems stupid to you, but it would mean the world to us. What is it called? Room? Zoom. Zoom. Okay, we'll zoom. I'll teach you how to make my chicken soup and matzo balls and get both the fish. And your family, at least, will have a proper Passover. You want to? You never want to share your recipe. It's time. You want to know when my mother shared her recipe with me? After her funeral. I found them in a safe deposit box. They were more sacred than the Dead Sea Scrolls. But really? The Dead Sea Scrolls? Never mind. It's all going to work out, Bobby. Don't worry. You know how to make a filter fish? You just get a big fish. And you can feel that. You sure you want to do this? I'm sure. I'm positive. I can't wait. Neither can I. <laughs> Bye, Mom. This is going to be the worst Passover ever. Hi, Mom. Call me crazy. That was the Best Passover ever. You think so? It was wonderful. I had such a good time. Oh, so did I. What did we have, 198 people there? At one point, we had 23 people logged on. I can't believe it. And Edith, all the way from Florida, Uncle Leo, even Neil showed up. Well, he is a son who loves his mother. And Cousin Matthew? He's been social distancing for years. I can't believe Yetta called in from Jerusalem. She looked good. She looked old. She looked like Yetta. And how'd my princess like it? Oh, she loved the matzo balls. Ah, uh, matzo balls with mozzarella. Oi. Then nothing will ever be as good as the ones grandma makes. One day her kids will say the same to you. You know, honey, I think this was the most special Seder of all. I think so too. Until next year, when God willing, we'll all get together again under one roof in Jersey. No, no, Mom, we'll come to you, tradition. Tradition, look with your father gone. I don't have the energy, I can't do everything. You and your family, you lead the Seder. Me? Are you sure? Listen, you know what Seda is about? It's about teaching the kids the story of how we've always overcome every obstacle, right? Faced our enemies and challenges, honoring our ancestors, and maybe even inspiring our kids when the time comes for them to do the same. And this sure is one of those times. So, I'm passing the matzah. Don't burn the brisket. Oh, Ma, I miss you. I wish I could give you a hug. Hug your family. That'll help. I know, I know, I know.
So how are you guys fixed for toilet paper? Um, we're, we're fine. Well, remember, if you eat more matzah, you won't need as much toilet paper. Constipation. Oh, Mom! <laughs> That's all zooming off. Okay. Bye, Mom. I love you. I love you too, kid. Oh, now what am I going to do with 27 jars of chicken soup? Oh, that was amazing. Uh, Renee Taylor, tell us about uh, making past the matzo. What was it like for you? It was a lot of fun. We laughed a lot. I know David for a long time, and I love working with him, and I love being in this very funny piece. It was a stretch for me. <laughs> this was based on conversations with my parents, and they're like, "Yeah, we're going to coffee. We're coffee for somebody with somebody," and I'd be like. Guys, you can't go out for coffee. I'm like, are you out of your mind? You know, we were three weeks into this and the idea seemed insane. You know, I did a couple of Zoom Passover Seders and it was wonderful. And I did the first and the second night with people. And, and so, you know, it was a good thing. And Renee, you were amazing. And you and, and Michelle. Um, wonderful. That you, you both, I totally believe that you guys were, were, uh, were, were mom and daughter. It was one of the early Zoom moments, I think. And we were already a few days past Passover. I mean, we started doing this very early and we had it written before Passover. We didn't know how, how Passover or Easter or any of these celebrations were going to be. And then the holidays and the opportunity to put them up past. And I said, you know, let's do it anyway, because it's a moment in time. You know, this whole living on Zoom, this whole sort of Brady Bunch existence that we have, where we're all in boxes looking at each other. And so it was a chance to sort of say, yeah, it actually did work that way. It actually did turn out better than we had any right to expect. And we did, uh, at least in the Seder that I attended, have people calling in from California or from different parts of the country who we never would have been able to see. It was one of the few silver linings uh, to COVID was connecting with people who were further away who we might never been able to connect with for everybody. Well, the cleanup is very easy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know, now they're teaching classes in Zoom acting. Yeah. Oh, you're kidding, really? Yeah, my wife, my wife has an acting school in Los Angeles, the Acting Center, and they've been teaching over Zoom. Okay, tell us the website. That's uh, www.theactingcenterla.com. I really wanted to give people something optimistic with these shows. We were all sort of living in a, in a state of, not depression, but just, eh. And I just wanted to give some people something, the, the upside, something a little bit more uh, uplifting and, and less pessimistic, or a little bit more optimistic. And you achieved it, well done. Let's take a look now at our next viral vignette. It's called Bed Buds, and Jenny Leona is in it, and Mary Chipo. Uh, Jenny wrote this one, and David directed. Let's check out Bed Buds. yours. How are you, lovey? I haven't heard from you in like a month. I know. I'm sorry. I've just been bad at everything lately. It's okay. I've been there. Is everything okay, though? Oh, yeah. No, I'm fine. I mean, I'm bored <laughs> for sure, but I'm okay. Are you still in bed? Um, yes. Jessica? I know. It's 3 p.m. 
I know. Aren't you in the middle of the woods? You love that crunchy shit. Go commune with the animals. Make daisy chains or something. I don't want to. Oh my god, what are you, five? Yeah. I've decided to revert back to childhood. You drank scotch during childhood? I'm teething. Seriously, Jess, what's wrong? Honestly, Trish, I'm fine. <sighs> Jessica, for fuck's sake, I was your maid of honor. I know when you're losing it. Do you have your meds, right? Yes, I have my meds. <laughs> it's a total nightmare trying to get them. God, I had to go all warrior princess on the whole pharmacy team. <laughs> oh my god, I love it when your Xena Jess comes out. <laughs> I think the whole Walgreens heard me. Seriously. Oh, and when I finally got them, the woman, she was just like, You take all of these? Oh, God. <laughs> I just wanted to be like, Oh, oh no, no, no. No, I, I, I just have public meltdowns for fun. You should try it. It burns calories. Jesus. <laughs> God, I thought Sam was going to throttle her. Oh, good. That's what husbands are for, right? Is it, though? I mean, I wouldn't know. I always thought they were for sex. Ugh. Breeders. <laughs> Still doesn't explain why you're stuck in bed. I don't know. I'm just over everyone right now. Just like, if I, if I go downstairs, someone's going to want to talk about politics or new virus symptoms or some amazing thing that so-and-so did today. You mean like politicians? <laughs> no, like them. At home, just being normal. I mean, like, Sam has this whole Zoom classroom set up in the basement, and then my mom has been working from home for, like, ever, so for her, it's like nothing has even happened. And then, oh my god, Trish, my dad has picked up, like, a dozen new hobbies. <laughs> he whittles now. But that's great. Yeah, but I don't have that. I mean, I can't bring myself to shower, let alone exercise or apply for jobs or fucking give a shit about anything so all i have ahead of me is just this whole fucking endless mass of useless unknowable nothing and i i hate it but sweetie that's what so many people are going through right now well are you working S some yeah see Everyone in my circle is doing something with their lives, and I'm just not. I mean, it's mostly manuscript stuff, so it's not like I'm getting paid or anything. I mean, it's... <laughs> yeah, but you will. Trish, you have a freaking Pulitzer. It's not like it's just going to sit there. I mean, <laughs> I can't even get on unemployment. I mean, I, it takes me 20 minutes to get through the menu, and then they just hang up on me. They don't even put you on hold anymore. It's just like some fucked up prank call that you sign up for. At... God, maybe I should just go off the grid, you know? Like, my options were function or die. Maybe I'd actually accomplish something. No, that's a terrible idea. You would choose death after, like, a week. What? I know you. Yeah. Food is not your main motivator. I mean... I've had suicidal fantasies, but starvation has never, ever been one of them. Mm -mm. Oh, so you've eaten today? No. I rest my case. I have never gone longer than a day without food. Not true. What? Jessica, you drank cayenne pepper juice and salt water for a week. You shit yourself in class. That was a cleanse. Cleanses don't count. No, they count. No, they do not. Yes, no, they do. They do. totally they count. Do. They don't. Go eat. And I mean something not from the spice cabinet, little miss. I can't. Okay. Maybe some cinnamon. White girls can't survive without cinnamon, apparently. I... I can't go downstairs. Yes, you can. No. No, honestly, Trish, it sounds like the worst thing in the world to me right now. There are worse things. Not to me, there's not. 
Well, uh, you could be completely isolated, stuck in the city alone, miles away from your family. Yeah, but I'm not. Right, but I am. What? Wait, hold on. No, no, no. Are you serious? What happened? What happened to Rachel? You guys didn't break up or anything, did you? Uh, no, no, it's not like that. Uh, she left the city right after you did. Her parents insisted that she come home. Oh. Yeah. But, and she didn't take you with her? Her parents aren't exactly aware that she's a Pluscatarian. Oh. <laughs> I told her I wasn't willing to pretend, and she said she wasn't ready to have that conversation, so here we are. That is so fucked up. How do I not know about this? Why would you know? We don't talk anymore. You're so lucky to have a place to go. With your family. I would give anything to see my mom right now. How is your mom? Well, the MS makes her susceptible, so not great. Oh, she's fucking the worst. I'm so, t I'm so fucking sorry, Trish. I, I completely forgot. Is someone taking care of her? Not really. She has a food delivery service, so at least she doesn't have to go out shopping. And you can't go home? I mean, you could rent a car if you didn't want to fly. Yes, no, if I'm a carrier, I could kill her. Honey, I think that's a little overdramatic. No, Jess, it's not. And if my mom got sick, I don't even want to think about it. You're right. You're totally right. That was a stupid idea. I am so sorry, Trish. Please, stop saying you're sorry. But I am. Just stop. Thank you, but stop. Um... You never should have had to do this alone. And I wish I had been there for you. Thanks. Me too. What can I do, Trish? Tell me. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. You need to try harder. Yeah, I know. You need to take care of yourself the way you take care of me or Sam or anyone else you care about. Not that you've been the best at that lately. <laughs> I get why you haven't been there. I really do. But you got to keep pushing through it, okay? It's not enough to keep breathing. You have to live your life. It's the only way you're ever going to get better. You know, that's good. Like you should be a writer or something. <laughs> <laughs> Family. Right? Family. Okay, lady. Let's put our big girl panties on. <laughs> you are going to take one foot off this bed. Can you do that for me? 
begrudgingly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it any form. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm seeing some action. Seeing something. Oh, one, one foot. One foot is on the ground. All right. One more. Well, since you asked so nicely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she did it. She did it. What a good girl. Yes. Brava. Bravissimo. Who's my big, strong girl? Me. <laughs> yes. That's right. You are a big, strong, powerful girl. No. You're a big, strong, powerful woman. <laughs> God, it's really disturbing how well that works. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do have some serious issues, so. <laughs> Whoops. Who said that? Who said that? Oh, my God. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> I love you too, Bugaboo. <laughs> Rachel's a bitch. Oh, Jessica. No, 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 no. I hold that she she left you like that. She deserves to go lick a doorknob. You know, <laughs> maybe no. sort and with them. they need to start snacking on some Tide Pods. No. no, that is terrible. Stop it. <laughs> I kind of like it. <laughs> okay, bed buds. Amazing. Fantastic. Jenny, you wrote that. Where did that come from in your mind? Uh, that came straight from life, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> uh, and I worked a lot with David and Fred to make sure that it was funny because it was definitely digging in that dark time. And like, how do we make this uh, a lighthearted, hopeful story? as well as it just being this struggle to actually get out of bed when there's nothing to do. And Mary has been my friend for so many years. Uh, we've known each other since we were about 10 or 11. So wow. it was a longstanding relationship. And I was really happy that she was um, the one to do this somewhat vulnerable piece with me and to also make it goofy and fun and really just find I don't know, find that light at the end of the tunnel and stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, Mary, it should be noted, uh, Mary Chifo, uh, who Jenny is friends with, uh, who has been a very busy actress the last several years, although you wouldn't know it to look at her because <laughs> most of, she she is very popular. She, she works under a ton of makeup on Star Trek Discovery as the leader of the Klingons. Oh my. Um, so that's a pretty, that's, pretty huge so she can still walk down the street well i guess not now because we're all wearing masks but but she <laughs> she's one of those she's one of those actresses who's fortunate enough to be able to walk down the street and nobody recognizes because unless they know what she looks like um it's, it's actually a, it's actually a segment of the witness protection program is to have a person <laughs> portray a klingon in a series that nobody knows where they are uh, but i i i have to admire uh, you know, we all drew a little bit of, from life on all of these. Jenny really dug deep. Um, and in fact, uh, really, this is a, I know, Jenny, this is a very personal piece for you. Um, and so it was, um, it was, it was a, it was a very courageous thing that you did to both write this and to and to appear in it. Jenny, what are you working on now? Right now, I am still developing a screenplay, a, a feature-length screenplay that I wrote, uh, also drawing from personal life, uh, to advocate for my younger brother, who uh, is on the autism spectrum and is nonverbal. And um, it's just about the struggles of trying to find a program for people who can't advocate for themselves. So it's called Speechless. You know, mm. finding the voice for those who can't speak for themselves. Wow. Another labor of love. That's great. Well, you brought mm -hmm. a lot to this project. I'm sure you're bringing a lot to that project, too, and to your family. So, well done. So, that was Bed Buds. And uh, thank you, David. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Jenny, for telling us all about it. We'll be back in just a little while, uh, right after this message about the Actors Fund. Hi, my name is Jenny. 
name is Appalachia Anna, and I'm a banjo picking girl from East Tennessee. And like most of the folks here, we have all lost gigs and income during these times of uncertainty. But we are very grateful for the Actors Fund, who helps all folks in the entertainment industry during these times of struggle. So if you can give a little bit, a lot, to the Actors Fund, it all goes back to the entertainment industry until we can get back out on our feet and get out there and pick and grin for you guys. Now we're going to go to Phoning It In. Phoning It In was with Fred Melamed and Jane Kaczmarek. Fred Stroppel wrote it, and let's take a look at it. Phoning It In. Yeah. <laughs> that was so wow. <laughs> Good stuff, huh? <laughs> uh, I I never knew it could be that. <laughs> Life is full of surprises. <laughs> you just came to me i don't know spur of the moment you know it was like um just spontaneous <laughs> but you're you're so good at it yeah another talent i didn't know i had <laughs> me neither how, how did you do that thing with your uh with your voice oh yeah yeah i know what you mean the, the sam elliott effect right well, hello, darling. How oh. are you doing? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been working on lowering my register, you know? So you've been, uh, you've been practicing? <laughs> well, I got a lot of spare time on my hands these days, you know? <laughs> and that, that thing you did with, <laughs> with your tongue. What, this? Yeah. I call that uh, salting the rim. <laughs> Neil, that was like you were really um, present. Power of persuasion. <sighs> you were really gifted. <laughs> <laughs> I think I missed my calling, actually. I probably should have been a lobbyist. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So? Ah. The icing on the cake. Listen, go ahead, get yourself a real one. <coughs> I'll wait. No, 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 I, I don't do that anymore. And you shouldn't either. Let's not start with the nagging, please, okay? I'll get marital flashbacks. Yeah, well, if we had had more moments like this, we... How did this even happen? Don't ask me. I just called to see how the kids were doing. Well, you are lucky that I even answered the phone. I mean, ordinarily, I can't stand you. Yeah, I'm well aware. And today especially was one of those days. I was already climbing the walls. Last person I wanted to talk to was you. Yeah, I could tell. You had that bitch face on, you know, ready for combat. Yeah, well, that's because you're usually an asshole. I thought you were calling to read me one of your stupid limericks. And I do not have a bitch face. No, certainly not. Plus, I have my book club on Zoom on, like, five minutes. Oh, shit. Jesus. Oh, would you look at me? I'm a wreck. Jesus Christ. Come on, Carrie. You look great. I, I only wish I could be there with you in person, you know? You know what I'm talking about, darling. Just the two of us. All right. Just stop. You couldn't bring yourself to touch me for, like, the last five years of our marriage. Now what? You're suddenly Harvey Weinstein? Well, that's a little harsh, isn't it? So, how are the kids, anyway? They're fine. Ben's in the basement practicing his karate and... Uh, Taekwondo, isn't it? Well, whatever. And Nikki is on the phone all day with her friends. And, um... Uh, Caroline? Caroline. She is, uh... Well, she's... She's doing something. Yeah, you're a regular helicopter mom there. <laughs> so, 
So, um, so what are you reading in the book club? I don't know. It's something about a man who thinks he's a penguin. It's it's an Oprah choice. I haven't actually read it. So come on, Carrie, skip the book club, all right? Let's hang out. You understand, darling. We could talk. Okay, Neil. You know what? You gotta cut out the bullshit, because that is never gonna happen again. I just want to make sure we're clear. Did I say anything about that? It was a lapse in judgment. I uh, it was fueled by cabin fever. I I was just so worn out. I wasn't thinking straight. Yeah, you know that was part of the appeal. You were more open. Your guard was down. You weren't wearing all that armor. It was just you. You know what I mean? It was you in your natural glory. It it reminded me of that time back when you were in the hospital. For my gallbladder. No, no, with Ben. Oh, ben, yeah, that was a tough haul. Sixteen hours. Yeah, you were exhausted, and you looked so tired, but you were so beautiful. I mean, it was ethereal. You were you were glowing. And I remember looking at you there in the hospital and thinking, "I am so, so lucky to be with this woman." You were lucky. I know it. And then you blew it. You, you screwed it all up. Well, can we agree that we were both kind of at fault? No. I, did I start fooling around with your best friend? Well, wait a second, Carrie. That was after we separated. No, Claire. Jennifer was my maid of honor. You didn't see me poaching from your best friends. Well, she was no bargain anyway. She was a yappy pain in the ass. Well, I could have told you that. Yeah, but you didn't. Oh, well, life is full of surprises, isn't it? So are you seeing her anymore? No, I'm, you know, more of a free agent now. I, I mean, we're still friends. We, we, we talk once in a while, but... You talk? Yeah. You're like on the phone? Yeah, what else? No, I mean, do you talk like this on the phone, or do you talk with her like this on the phone? Well, you know. Aha. Uh -huh. I knew it. I'm not the first. Well, you were the best. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, I can't believe this. You had phone sex with my maid of honor. Well, no, it was, it was more of a practice run. Oh, right. Oh, so spontaneous. Yeah, well, who else did you practice on? Huh? Allison Ferber? Lori Pompa's ass? Uh, what, that skank from high school? What was her name? Marcy. Um, Mar well, whatever look, it's been, it's been more of an evolving process, you know? You are an asshole. Yeah, I think we've already established that pretty well. But listen, you can look at it this way. My long personal odyssey has wound up paying off, you know, for, for everybody. I have to go. Wait a second. Don't get all jealous and everything. I am not jealous. I don't give a shit. You don't matter to me, Neil. Do you understand that? Now, just don't call me anymore. Wait, wait. Hang on just a second, all right? Please. Don't hang up. Carrie, I, I like talking to you. Talk to Jennifer. You understand what I'm saying? I mean... I'm all alone here, you know? I'm just I'm just dying for, for some kind of human contact, you know? Just a touch, a hug or something. I, I don't even get to hug the kids anymore. I know. It's tough, you know? I got no one. No one. I am always here for you, Neil. If you need me, you know that. I know. You're great, Carrie. You are. Look, I was a lucky guy. I know that. Very lucky. Okay. So no. lucky. No. Would you like to get lucky? Lucky with me. Shit. I could oh, read you a bedtime uh, story. I could read the whole club a story. Yeah. Hey, uh, everybody. Um, yeah, no, I'm just running a little bit late. Uh, why don't you start without me? I'll be there in a few minutes. Okay, bye-bye. 
few minutes. Okay, well, we better hurry, right? Neil, I won't. I can't. You don't have to, okay? You don't have to do anything. Just, just relax, okay? Just sit back. Let me take you there. Remember? Remember that secret place down by the hayloft? Yeah. This is wrong. Why do I feel this way? Because it's the apocalypse, sweetheart. It's the end of days, you understand? You have to make everyone count. True. Look, just just close your eyes, all right? Just close them. Let me let me rub a little bit of this this massage oil into my hands. <sighs> Prickly pear. Sweet almond. Sweet almond. Even better. And now, I'm working this oil into your shoulders. That's it. Oh, and then I'm working it down your arms. That's right. Let me just move this shirt right out of the way. Yeah. That's it. That's good. Yeah. Oh, I'm out of my mind. Now I'm caressing your breasts ever so gently. And now lower. Lower. Lower, darling. Mom! Mommy's busy, go get a snack! Let me just move these sweatpants to the side. Yeah. I have no sense, I have no will. Next stop, Margaritaville. No, this, this, this can't be happening. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mommy, I can't find the Hot Pocket. All right, that was phoning it in. And uh, those actors, it may have been called phoning it in, but those actors weren't phoning it in. They were really delivering. Fred, wonderful performance. Uh, what Thank was you, it like Jim. to work on this one? Uh, it was very, very enjoyable. Uh, Janie uh, and I went to drama school together. I've known her for over 40 years. Wow. Um, a dear friend of mine, wonderful actress, um, and I, and you know, I, I think uh, many people have had the experience um, under duress of of calling somebody that they were involved with in the past, um, maybe in the distant past, maybe more recently, uh, because they're lonely and they have some memories, uh, perhaps uh, more emotional memories, perhaps more lustful memories, depends on who who you are. Um, <laughs> But so I, that was a very uh, easy for me to understand, particularly uh, under the current, uh, no, I shouldn't say current anymore, but under the circumstances of, of the, the lockdown that we were all living in at the time. Mm. So uh, I, it was really, really enjoyable to do. And, uh, you know, I, it was, it was, I particularly enjoyed it because even though it was clearly uh, intended to be funny, uh, there was something extreme, to me anyway, something extremely real about the predicament of being so alone and uh, go going through the sort of, you know, film clips of, of my life and thinking, who do I miss and, and what should I have done differently? And is there, is, there, is, there, is there a way to rekindle anything in this kind of, this time when everybody's alone? So that's a very kind of sober answer to, to a, you know, a, 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 presumably, hopefully a funny um, little piece. But I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed doing it, I have to say. And I enjoyed, I, and, and David David made some very good, David really helped me. Uh, generally, I like to not listen to directors at all. <laughs> I just, you know, I, I kind of nod my head and do whatever the hell I want. But I think David's, uh, David's uh, direction was actually very useful to me. Thank uh, you, Fred. In this particular uh, case. And uh, I, I, I really, it, was really, it was a great deal of uh, pleasure for me to do it. That's great. Well. It really, really shows. Um, you mean I never listen? <laughs> uh, Jane Kesmerick, uh, it was so fun to meet you when I worked with you on This Is Us. It, that was a good time, ago. wasn't it? That was yeah. great, Jim. Why, why did you get involved with this this crazy project? Well, I uh, I've always wanted to do a sex scene with Fred Melamed, um, <laughs> and my dream came true. Fred and I last appeared on stage together um, at drama school. 
long time ago when I was Queen, uh, Queen Formica the Resilient, and he was Prime Minister Peugeot in a Viking revenge comedy written by Keith Redeen at the Yale Cabaret. So Fred and I had so much fun doing that 30 years ago that we thought it would be fun to do this together. And I was very glad he asked me to come on board. Nice, nice. Fred Strappel, what is, what is the origin of this particular uh, piece? Uh, well, this, this one does not come from personal experience. This is one that just came out of the idea of, you know, what kind of funny things might be happening uh, on, in this kind of situation with Zoom. And um, it's, it's sort of, uh, it's, it's an interesting situation as, as Fred was saying that, you know, people who want to reach out to somebody they used to be with, they, they couldn't ask them for lunch. They couldn't uh, try to, you know, have, just have a meeting to work things out. The only way you can do it is over the phone. And I guess uh, in this particular case, he had found a new skill that he wanted to practice. And uh, so he, he put it upon his ex-wife and then you just see what happens from there. And I think when we wrote, I don't know, we, were, we knew it was going to be for some of the characters that we had already established. I wasn't sure if we knew exactly who they were going to be. We didn't, we didn't know it was going to be Fred. Or I think originally we were talking about Robert Wool, who will be coming up a little bit later, um, who seemed like the type that would be having a lot of uh, phone sex or Zoom sex, his, that character. Um, I know that, it would be thrilled to hear that. Yeah, and then and then, I said, "What about Fred's character? What about Fred, who who this this guy, this this accountant, who's who's writing limericks in his spare time?" Robert Will is not quite pathetic enough. Who who can we find it? Well, but no, but you know what? In the original one, he wasn't pathetic. He was just horrible. Um, what you brought to it and what we did after on subsequent writing was bring some humanity to it. Originally, it was just very one note. He's going to have sex and his wife is going to hate him. And what, what you know, you were talking about how we directed it. And, and the original instinct is to just make this guy a sleazebag who just wants to have phone sex with everybody he can find. Again, you thought and, of me, you understand? Uh, yeah, that was my first thought, Fred, knowing you as I do for so many years um, and knowing that knowing the charges that have been dropped over the years, but me too is here now. So it's all kind of, now the 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 main thing with that was you found the humanity in it and together working on it, as you said, you know, your original take was to go for the sleaze. And as soon as we took that out of it and made you more human, not pathetic, human. And yet had this, it became, your, your character became much more relatable. It was, you know, and, and, and Fred and I spent a lot of time working on this. And in fact, originally I wasn't going to direct it because it was intimidating to me because it was a fine line there between what it could have been. And by doing it the way we did it and Jane's portrayal and your portrayal, we found that balance, I think, and I, I'm really proud of that one. I'm really proud of, of how it was written. It could have been a real <laughs> bad, it could have been really bad. And it, instead it's both funny and very poignant. And that's what we wanted to bring to all of these. We wanted to bring a humanity. We wanted to bring a poignance. We wanted it to be funny. We wanted it to be a one act play. We did not want it to be Saturday Night Live. And, and you did that, Fred, you and Jane together. Um, by the end of it, you understood why these two people were together. And you also understood why they were no longer together. Can I say something? I just wanted to say to Fred that uh, in the, the piece with Jane, uh, I got very turned on. And usually I don't with old people. But you guys, uh, you guys were wonderful. And, and when you did a little thing with your tongue, uh, I, I thought perhaps that was the end of your career. But <laughs> apparently it hasn't been. <laughs> we may, well, who knows? We'll see. Uh, it, 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 it may have been the, the end of one career and the beginning of a new one. <laughs> we 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 did we did talk about that, Jim. We did we did talk about that off camera. We did talk about the fact that uh, there could be a lot of women who were going to be playing that episode over and over again. I think. Yep, yep. I'm going to say one more thing and then I'm going to leave, David. All right. Yes, Barry. Thank you.
I want to I want to thank you very much for putting this together and for spending the time and energy and I don't know how many hours that you put into this uh, changing your backdrop, you know, behind you. Uh, is that the real backdrop now, or is that a phony one? That is a totally phony backdrop. That's a phony backdrop. Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It makes you look so intelligent. But I, and I've read all those books. By the way, yeah. the ones the ones on the top, they're all comic books. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you must have you must have the thickest black book of any producer, writer, director that I've ever known to be able to put all these people together in such a short amount of time and get such great work out of everybody. You're to be you know, congratulated and applauded. And thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing this. Uh, my, man, it was thank my honor. Me. It was really my honor to work with everybody who, who, who was on this. I, I'm the one who's grateful and to everybody who worked on this thing because it was a labor of love for me um, because I respect the heck out of all of you. And, and I couldn't just ask people, oh, you want to come work with me for free? And my wife and I just talked, well, let's, let's do something. Let's do something. Let's Wait a second. Did anybody get paid? Uh, I didn't get my check. <laughs> Your money went to the Actors Fund. Uh, and, uh, and my money went to the Actors Fund. And, 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 and yo, Jim, and yo, and, and Kirk, you do this better than I do, Jim. Why, why am I doing Jimmy Stewart? <laughs> I don't know. Here, it's, it's everywhere. It's, it's in Mr. Potter's pocket is where it is. Darn it. <laughs> Jim, you've gone through this whole thing without doing one impersonation. I know. How did, how did you do that? Would you? I want you to go back and do it all again in each little episode. I want a different character, all right? You're so brilliant at it. Oh, thanks a lot, uh, Barry Bostic. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. <laughs> we all, uh, <laughs> Who's that? The White House, we appreciate watching your, your motion picture films. Uh, that's, who? <laughs> that, uh, uh, Rocky Honor. Was it the Rocky Honor picture show? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I do none, none of that. You, you do it all so brilliantly. Well, you know, it seems, you know, sometimes it seems uh, fitting and other times not so much. So yeah. I'm just happy to have a conversation so, with everybody. You know, we did, we did, we did try casting a, a few other people. We did try to get Morgan Freeman. Isn't that right, Morgan? That's right. They did try to get him in the viral vignette world, but, uh, Unfortunately, he had too many other things to do. <laughs> and I think uh, I think we all said uh, George Clooney was uh, tried to tried to. Uh... <laughs> That's right. George Clooney could have been involved, but he was busy cleaning his pool on Lake Como. So, <laughs> Fred, what does the Actors Fund uh, mean to you? Well, the Actors Fund is a great time honored charity um, that many people I know have benefited from really helps a lot of people on many levels uh, and also one of the most uh, honestly and efficiently run charities they you know they rate charities and their ratings are always that, that, that where people's uh, donations really go um, to the people that they're supposed to help uh, and I encourage anybody who can afford it um, to well I, I don't think I'm saying anything very sage when I say that uh, the, the last year and a half has been difficult for a lot of people but imagine people who make their livings uh, performing in front of audiences. Uh, very, very tough on those people. So I think while contributions are always appreciated, I think this year is especially, it's especially appreciated and especially necessary if you can manage to do it, to give whatever you can. And it doesn't matter if it's, if it's small or, or, or a big or medium sized, um, it's, it, it really will go towards uh, preserving the the ability of people to uh, provide for their families in a time when the world has changed so vastly. So it's much appreciated. Well said, well said. I wanna thank everybody that's participated so far. We'll be back in just a little while, uh, right after this message about the Actors Fund. I'm Ruth, I'm an actor. And in the entertainment business, we often live paycheck to paycheck, but during this pandemic, some of us can't pay our rent or even buy groceries, but by donating to the Actors Fund, you can help keep the entertainment business alive. See, the Actors Fund helps everyone in the entertainment industry during times of financial crisis. So, by donating whatever you can, you can help keep the magic of entertainment alive.
Well, here we are, and we are back uh, looking at more viral vignettes during this marathon of viral vignettes. And uh, I have with me uh, the actress Susan Rattan, and also the actor from the next uh, viral vignette we're going to watch, uh, Mr. Jim Meskimen. Jim, how are you doing today? Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I was. Uh, uh, boy, it's a nice, it's a nice looking shirt you got there, Jim. Thank you. Thanks for those kind words. We're we're going to now look look uh, at this next viral vignette, Common Census. And it was written by Fred Stropple uh, from an idea uh, from David Levin and his wife, Rachel. Yeah. Good morning, sir. I hope you're having a great day. Yeah. I I'm Patricia Jenkinson. I'm calling from the U.S. Census Bureau. Uh, what? The Census Bureau. We're doing the official count of the entire U.S. population as mandated every 10 years by the Constitution. How'd you get this number? Oh, we have everyone's number, sir. Uh, if you have a minute, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Now, <sighs> am I speaking to Mr. Jubal Mulch? Mr. Jubal Mulch is my father. Oh, may I speak to him? Uh, he's out back. Well, that's all right. I can hold. Yeah. Well, it might take a while. I'm going to have to go dig him up. I don't think he's going to have too much to tell you. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, so are, are you the head of the house? <sighs> uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay, um, your name is? Jubal Jr. Jubal Jr. So, so uh, you are Mr. Jubal Mulch. Yeah, you can say that. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Mulch, is it all right if I ask you a few questions about your household? What for? Well, uh, it's a census, and to properly conduct a census, we have to gather information. Is this a robocall? No. Yeah, because I don't deal with no robocalls. I only deal with live, flesh and blood Americans. Well, I I'm not a robot, sir, as you can plainly see. Yeah, you might be a hologram. No, no, I'm a, I'm a real person. Yeah, can you prove it? Well, I, I'm talking to you, am I not? It doesn't make any difference. Holograms can talk. Did you ever see that Star Wars movie? Star Wars, yes. Uh, many years ago. Um, a, a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> what? Never mind. Um, mm -hmm. Now, holograms can talk plenty. Uh, that little brunette in that Star Wars, she was talking a lot. And she, by the way, in that movie, you remember that movie, don't you? Yes, but a, that was a movie. She was a hologram inside of a robot. So kind of a double whammy. See, what I'm trying to avoid here is uh, history repeating itself. Yes, Mr. Mulch, I, I, I'm just trying to conduct a simple interview. Oh, simple. Well, you should talk to my wife then. She's a simple one around here. Hey, Janie Sue, Janie Sue, where are you? Get your ass in it, here. It, it's Get really not necessary. Robo call. Come on over here. It's really not robo necessary call. to bother her. Please, Mr. Mulch. She's out in the back somewhere. I think she's probably skinning squirrels right about now. You eat squirrels? No, she does it for pleasure. Oh, I, I see. Yeah, she was a gentle little time we first got married but she's toughened up over the years she's like a terrier now you rub her the wrong way she'll chew your face right off spouse uh, Janie Sue Mulch hey 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 hey! what are you writing down there it's a census sir I have to record who's living with you why well, that ain't nobody's business well actually it's the government's business oh the government huh yeah you mean the, you mean the deep state no I mean the regular state, sir. Yeah, I'm on to you people. I know what you want. You want to invade our privacy. Well, I'll tell you what, 
that don't stand well with me because that's unconstitutional. Well, it's not unconstitutional, sir. It's in the Constitution. Oh, yeah. In the Constitution. What amendment is that? Well, it's not an amendment. See, there you go. If it ain't an amendment, it ain't in the Constitution. So you should have thought of that. Well, come on, Mr. Mulch. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I see what y'all are doing. Yeah, it's the same old game. Take away our rights. Take away our guns. Well, I, joke's I don't, on you. No. Joke's on you because I don't even have a gun. What do you think? You know, that? I think that's the best news I've heard all day. I don't believe in that census either, I'll tell you. Census has got a kind of a bad history. You know, the first guy that done a census, that Herod. Herod? Yeah, King Herod from the mm -hmm. Bible. He pulled that bogus census out of his ass and he, he found out where everybody lived. And then he, he wound up killing every firstborn child. And that's how this whole thing started. That's how it all began. How what started? How what started? Persecution of the Christians, man eating lions, Spanish Inquisition. It's all in the Bible. Yeah, in the Bible, by the way, that's my constitution. Okay. In God we trust. Or as the Hebrews say, E pluribus unum. You know, you're you're making some valid historical points here, Mr. Mulch. But that was 2,000 years ago, and we're doing things just a little bit differently now. We don't yeah. take anyone's firstborn children anymore. We, we just try to ascertain how many people are living in this country. Oh, yeah, so she can raise our taxes. I understand that. I tell you what, I wish you would take our, my firstborn, a Jubal Jr. He's good for nothing, pain in the ass. So you have a son named Junior Junior. Right, that's it. I'm terminating this call. I'm going to turn this thing off. Got it. Mr. Malt, will you please work with me here? Uh, I do not want to come to your house or, or whatever it is you're living in. Hey, well, you can't come to my house. You know why? Because I'm practicing the social distancing. Anyway, you come to my house, you better watch out because I'll blow your head clean off. You don't have a gun. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, though. Well, I'll stick Jenny Sue on you. She's fiercer than a gun. And she will tear you a new patootie hole just as quick as looking at you. Or, or my daughter, Myra. Now, she's getting to be quite tough, too. She cold cocked me one time. I saw stars for a week. You're going to watch out for her. So that's two things there. Daughter named Myra. Hey, hey, you tricked me that time. Doggone it. I, you know what? I'm going I'm done with this. I want to have my lawyer call you. I'm going to sue you. Mr. Mulch. I'm going to sue you for harassment. Better yet, I'm going to sue you for sexual harassment on account of I've been getting a vibe from you this whole time. Will you just shut up and answer my questions? You don't have to be unprofessional about it. Unprofessional? Unprofessional? That's it, Fester. I've had enough of your backwoods deliverance bullshit. I represent the United States government, and you can either communicate with me or you can talk to the federal marshals who would be more than happy to rearrange your dental work. As far as harassment, the, the idea that I would be sexually attracted to you makes me want to throw up a little in my mouth. You're about as attractive to me as one of your wife's skinless squirrels. You don't have to get personal there. No, I'm going to ask you some questions, and you are going to answer every goddamn one of them. Or you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call your wife in here and tell her that you are putting the moves on me. <laughs> you ain't got the guts to do that, little robo lady. <laughs> J.D. Sue! Turn the volume down on this thing. Don't, don't do that, okay? She's got ears like a bat. All right, then. Full name. Jubal Jefferson Mulch. Age? 53, 55. Sex. See, now I'm starting to get that vibe off you again. That's what I was talking about. Before. Hey, 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 hey. Sex, male. Sex, male, obviously. Hey, you holograms, when you get worked up, you're a testy. 
Are we going to be done soon? Because I got the Jeopardy to watch. Oh, my God. <laughs> what an incredible. Susan Rattan, you were uh, wonderful in that piece in Common Census. Uh, tell me, what was it like uh, to, to do a Zoom performance? I assume that was probably one of your first Zoom performances of the of the pandemic period. Yes, it was actually my first, um, and it was uh, I was I had trepidation about doing it. I am not that comfortable with Zoom in the first place, and the idea of acting with somebody um, via that that method. Of, it was like I don't know. Okay, I'll try it. Uh, but it was great. It was great. The relationships were great. Very wonderfully adversarial. Um, I I loved it. Susan. Uh Susan, this was directed by Anson Williams. He obviously was not in your apartment and he wasn't in Jim Meskimen's mother's garage, uh, but he was also directing over Zoom. How was it working with Anson, if you recall? Uh, Anson's great. I had worked with him years ago on a, a movie uh, and hadn't really seen him in all that time. So it was really great to be reconnected with him. He's terrific. He's, he's really got great skill. Yeah. I agree. Uh, Jim Meskimen, if you don't mind, what are you doing? Just pay attention. Jim, you worked, uh, you've known Anson Williams for uh, quite a long time, isn't that right? I have known Anson Williams for a long time. So I met him probably when I was about 13 and he was probably 17 or 18 at, on the set of Happy Days at Paramount Studios. And uh, we've been friends, you know, for a long time. He, he, he was always so fun to watch him uh, shooting Happy Days. So this is uh, a nice reunion. <laughs> Wait, am, I, am I boring you? Is that it? Am I boring you? Let me ask you something. Am, am I boring you? Is this getting boring for you? Huh? I'm like a, I'm like some droning idiot that uh, putting you to putting you to sleep. Is that it? <laughs> Fascinating. Oh boy. Fred, you 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 watched Common Senses just now, and uh, what? How do you feel the performers uh, did with your material? Well, let's say when we first started writing it, um, the idea came. I think because we knew that we had Susan as the possibility of, as an actress and we were trying to figure out something to write for her. And I think uh, David and uh, his wife, Rachel, they, they came up with the idea of doing a, something about the census. And um, so it sort of spun out from there. And then- so It has nothing to do with you at all, in other words. No, <laughs> I just happened to be the person who wrote it. The first, the, fir the first thing that came to us was, and I, I had spent some time talking to Michelle Green, who co-starred with, with Susan on uh, L.A. Law, one of my favorite shows, and we started talking about Susan's strengths. And this, Susan, this was written for you, specifically for you. Uh, and Jim, uh, Jim Meskimen acting uh, in it, uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, where, you, where it was shot. Yeah. I shot it in my mother's garage because she, uh, you know, my mother's 92. And so she's had time to lay down a lot of strata in that garage. And I thought that, you know, we'd get a lot of value out of that set dressing. So, uh, and it had a refrigerator nearby. And the, as we're rehearsing, I thought, you know what? I can just reach in here and grab a Sharps beer. <laughs> and I, I had the... The camera, I was supposed to be holding it. And we were all figuring all this out, you know, and I remember we were trying different shifts because we were all very new to Zoom and to uh, video conferencing and stuff. And I remember taking my phone and I'm like, oh, I want to have it steady. But, you know, I was trying to figure it out. So I rested it eventually on this canister of uh, that I had propped up on a thing and then, uh, like on a step ladder, then a canister of, uh, you know, uh, squirrel repellent <laughs> okay. which seemed kind of fitting it all just sort of fit together oh well, that's hilarious yeah but uh my mom was actually watching me film from another part of the garage she would come wander out and she'd say is anson there <laughs> hi anson I'm like we're filming mom we're filming right now your mom being marion ross of happy days fame mrs c yeah who knows anson very well Susan, you did this uh, as I did out of the goodness of our hearts to uh, support the Actors Fund. What does the Actors Fund uh, mean to you? Uh, have you ever uh, had use of its services or known somebody that was benef beneficiary of it? I never have, but I do have friends who have, and it literally you know, saved their lives uh, in that moment when they were in need. Uh, it's an incredible organization. It's done so much for so many performers that I know. Um, 
it's a shaky business. So knowing that you have someone there, uh, an organization there to get your have your back, it's it's really wonderful. Jim, is there anything else you wanted to say? No, I, I think you're good. If you, if he turns around, you, okay, you find we're running more. I didn't answer something. Just let me know. That's fine. Susan, if I can ask, what are you uh, what are you working on now? You have any plans in the offing? Any projects? I've been I've actually been working on the, uh, another Chuck Lorre show, United States of Al, as a recurring character. Oh, very. Um, nice. And uh, it's a wonderful show. If you haven't seen it, it's got a lot of heart to it. Um, and um, closing on the end of a development deal with a studio for a children's show. So I'm really excited about that. Well, good luck uh, with that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Jim Eskiman, uh, you have any anything you're doing? Any any plans in the offing? Any projects at all? Well, anything? I just uh, completed work with a friend of mine on a TV pilot. So we'll see if that, uh, if that happens or not. But uh, we worked very hard on that. And I'm working on the animation all the time. I'm working on uh, Ask the Story Bots, which uh, Greg and Evan Spiridelis have put together for Netflix. And uh, did the big video game for a big franchise recently. And I'm, I'm in my booth a lot. I'm doing audio books. I'm doing commercials. And of course I do the uh, voice of K uh, Colonel Sanders for KFC. So uh, when you see that on your television, you, if you don't see a celebrity dressed up like Colonel Sanders, uh, it's generally me. The important thing is you're breathing, you're healthy. Fred Stroppel, you're a very talented writer. I'm sure you're working on something exciting right now. What's going on with you? Well, actually, I just finished a uh, full-length play, and it's it's a two-character play, and the two characters are Kellyanne Conway and her husband George, and we're trying to get this done. We, we were pushing it around to different theaters. We think it'd be great for a fundraiser or whatever, and hopefully move on to the big stages when the big stages reopen again. So that's that's my uh, project right now. Very very ambitious. Now I'm also doing this. Um, I used to write for a show called Wild Wild Wubsy. It was a children's show. That was about 10 years ago. And now we're actually going to try to do it as a film. So I'm starting to work on the screenplay for that right now. Fantastic. Well, I'm sure we'll hear more about you and, and your projects. That's cool. We'll be back in just a second with more viral vignettes. Thanks for watching. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Hi, I'm me. And that's me 30 days ago. I think that's you. I'm Christopher. I'm an actor, host, and improviser. I, along with thousands of people in the entertainment industry, live gig to gig. And as most TV, film, and theater productions have been shut down, most of us are unsure when or if we'll get another paycheck. The Actors Fund is here to help everyone during these times of crisis. Anything you can donate will help us keep the entertainment industry alive and ensure you have something to binge watch next time you're stuck at home. Well, welcome back. And uh, joining us now uh, for our Viral Vignettes Marathon is uh, a next panel of, of very talented people. Don Most is with us, Robert Wool. Linda Pearl, Lydia Cornell, Bill Bickley, David Levin, and Fred Stroppel. And hello, everybody, and welcome to the Viral Vignettes Marathon. Thank you. Thank you. And Don, you're uh, you're you're in another country, aren't you? It looks I can tell yes. from the print on the wall that you're elsewhere. Yeah, I am in another country. I'm, I'm I I was in Prague this morning, and it's near a castle where we will be filming. Oh my so God. I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait. I play a king. King Don of Czechoslovakia. <laughs> it's like yes. Yes. You belong in my fake background here with a king. Lydia looks like she should be in... <laughs> Where are you? I mean, that, that background is amazing. What is that? It's a Harry Potter. I love Harry Potter because my kids... Oh, oh, that's why. Okay. How's but everybody David... holding up out there? Uh, we, everybody's staying safe and uh, uh, managing through this difficult time. That. Have my vaccines. Grateful for it. Me too. Yes, indeed. Fully vaccinated. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Huge. I'm yeah. going back for more. I enjoyed it so much. <laughs> <laughs> you double dipping. I don't think this is going to be a controllable piece here. I'm I'm throwing up. I'm throwing up my hands. Yeah. This... Hey, Jim. I'm gonna just interject to interrupt everybody right now. I love your videos. Oh my gosh. They're like medicine. They're funny. They're smart. So keep them coming. They're fantastic. They are. Thank you. That's very kind of you. I appreciate it. A lot of us have known since you were, I don't know, <laughs> seven years old. Anyway. I, and I know William Bickley I, I, from Happy Days, of course. And, and uh, Bill, uh, you, you told me in an, an email, just a little something that blew my mind, is that when Gary Marshall made you the showrunner of Happy Days for the first two seasons, you were how old? I was 26. Oh, my. <laughs> 
And I had pictures of Gary in compromising positions. And Linda, I met on, on a shoot that Ron Howard was doing a film with Don also, that was his really his first feature film. Jim is right. It was, did you ever hear the one about Leo Green? But it was changed to Leo and Lori. Yes. <laughs> Leo and Lori, exactly. Uh, I was a kid. My mom got me that gig because Ron, Ron called up and said, uh, you think, uh, you think Jim would want to, uh, you know, kind of be a, like a gaffer or uh, uh, roll up cables or whatever on, uh, we're working on the weekend with my family and uh, Ranson is there. And, <laughs> and, I, and my mom said, yes, get my son out of the house. Have we mentioned who Jim's mom is on the show? Uh, well, my mom is Marion Ross who played Mrs. C. And that's, that's that for me was the key, uh -huh. key to the kingdom there. This is a she's full very, Happy Days reunion here. Almost. Yeah, she's very well. She sends her love. She's uh, 92. Moving on a little bit. Uh, thank you for all those kudos and those memories. we got lots more. I mean, with this group, I think we could just talk for about two or three hours about all the ways every, all these lives and careers are intertwined. And it's, it, it's, it's wonderful. It's very, very unique, I think. Uh, we're obviously here to support the Actors Fund. And... Um, now, let's just kind of go through one by one and say, uh, how'd you get involved with viral vignettes? And Don, you kind of were a casting director for uh, these three videos that we're gonna see right now. I guess so, I, yeah, that's an interesting, I didn't think of it. David and I had worked on a, on a show that I did with Anson Williams some years ago. It was a pilot, Fred wrote, it was a fabulous script. Um, it was supposed to be an anthology series. Fred wrote a whole bunch of one act plays that was the source for, 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 for some of these. And Anson and I had a devil of a time picking because they were all so good, but we, we picked one and we shot it. And, um, and that's, and it was a great, great experience. And that's how David and I met. And then, and then about, I don't know, eight months ago, a few months after the, the virus hit, I got a call from him and he's saying, you know, we all want to be productive and do something during this time. And, and we're trying to figure out a way to do it. And Fred and I, you know, have been talking about it and we came up with this concept, viral vignettes. And, um, and it would be, you know, five to 10 minute pieces. And, um, and we could shoot it. You could shoot it from your, you know, your home office or wherever in your home, because it, it'll be scripted in a way that it's two people that, have to communicate this way because we're all doing it that way. And I said, well, that sounds like a really, really cool, very ingenious idea. And, um, and knowing that David was producing and that Fred was going to be writing, I instantly said, I'm in. We were really lucky that people that said yes and the people that Don worked with. It just sounded like fun. So that's why we're all in this incredible business is because we actually enjoy it. And also Don, I, I, I really wanted to write again for, for Don, oh. for a lot of oh. reasons. Oh, that's so sweet and kind because, you know, probably my favorite episode for me in Happy Days, and you certainly know which one I'm talking about, is uh, the one called Motorcycle that, that you and, and, and Michael wrote. Michael Warren, and um, it was just a brilliant episode. Trying to come up with a sketch for, for your purpose. What I actually wanted to do was, back when we started Happy Days, I, 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 I tried to decide just for myself what the end product was going to be of all these characters, who they were going to be when they grew up. And so uh -huh. I named them in my head. I would never, never tell Gary Marshall because he would argue with me. <laughs> but my name for Donnie that I never, I'm sorry, Don, that I, I never told anybody was neurotic. That's okay. <laughs> that, that Ralph Mouth would grow up to be a neurotic. And I thought, okay, who is he now? And that was, that was how I started thinking about whatever a sketch would be. Oh, now I'm curious. What was Anson? What was Potsy? Yeah. You know, <laughs> Anson, Anson was... I want to say salesman because that's just a model name. He was a guy that was going to be okay with everything. It came true. And who had <laughs> his best lines in the third season of Happy Days was they look at a nudist magazine and Anson, you'll remember this, Don, because you were in the scene. And Anson says, I'd love I to do. see that in a sweater. 
I just said salesman. Somebody died. Right, that was it. Uh, and Ron, was, so Ron was easy because Ron, Ron's, Richie Cunningham was me. So that was easy. Oh and in fact, when Linda Pearl so, so beautifully played the girl that was way too worldly for Richie, <laughs> that was my revenge on all women in high school in all of my past. So that's oh my gosh. <laughs> gosh. I, just, I just remember the gum going behind Linda's ear every, every, every just before the kissing. That was Jerry Paris. <laughs> I Jerry think Paris. I'm remembering that right, that that was really, great. yeah, Jerry she was a child too. <laughs> well, I, I was, I mean, and so was Jerry Paris. And so, <laughs> and, and, and to the end, till the very end, till he was a child. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I just want to say I sneaked onto the Paramount lot in 1979 and walked right into the middle of a shot that Gary Marshall, Jerry Paris was directing and Gary Marshall was standing there talking and he goes, I go, may I have a job? And I pat on my resume. And Gary Marshall goes, yes, darling, but we're in the middle of a shot here. And then he told me to sit yes, down. Yes, of course you can have a job. Just let me get this take. We were friends for life until he died. I mean, he was a friend. But that's when I met you, Donnie. I have to call you Donnie. I'm sorry. I love that name. Yeah, I think I think we should just all just call him Donnie. I think. <laughs> Donnie and Bill were responsible for getting my, my, my first job in, in L.A. Uh, oh, was I didn't know that. Yo, yeah, yeah. Donnie and I were friendly in New York, and then I had uh, come out, and and <clears throat> I was like, Donnie, how do, how do you do that? And he said, Well, you got an apartment at Oakwood Garden Apartments or whatever, and you have to get yourself a car. It's like, Oh my God, okay, I'll do all that. So he sort of shepherded me through that process. I moved out with my girlfriend, and uh, and then you know, as Donnie does, uh, he, I mean, we're all witness to this um, serially in our lives. Donnie called and he said, oh, there's a role and you're right for it. And so get your agent to put you up for it. And I did. And Bobby Hoffman, rest his soul, wonderful casting director and, and went in. And anyway, I got, uh, I got the role and, and worked under Bill and worked with Donnie. And it was uh, a remarkable way to have started in the business in LA. I mean, these long term friendships now. I yeah. think that's my favorite part about being this age is how life just folds back in on itself. It's just, it's, it's thrilling. And, you know, from near and far, we've borne witness to all the chapters of our lives. And uh, it's, a, it's a, a treasure chest. Well, so beautifully said, Linda, so beautifully <laughs> said. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's watch one of these videos, shall we? Here's Don Most and Gail O'Grady uh, in a wonderful little scene directed by Don, and this is Bill Bickley's one-act play, Scrabble. Enjoy. Dr. Branstein. Oh, hello, Marshall. This is a surprise. You um, just had a regular appointment on, let me see, Monday. And, well, you're not due again until next... Next Monday. I know. I know. But I have something wonderful to tell you. And I can't wait. Oh, well, okay, I, I have a minute until my next appointment, and I, uh, listen, I know that being shut in for this virus thing has been difficult for you. Are you having a better day? <laughs> better than better. Great. I am great. I, I feel really um, very just great. Great. Okay. Still taking your medication, aren't you, Marshall? Well, I, I don't think I need it anymore, Dr. Branstein. Uh, Marshall, it's important that you stay on your medication, especially 
especially during this difficult time. But that's the thing. I'm well. You're a miracle worker. Our last session, <laughs> it cured me. Okay. Therapy is an ongoing. When you told me to take this time, you know, this break in, in the routine to, how did you put it? To be the person you've always wanted to be? That's it. Oh, I did it. I've done it, and it's, it's wonderful. You are wonderful. I feel, I feel free for the first time in I don't know when. Okay. Perhaps now would be a good time for us to do that relaxation exercise that I taught you. Don't need it. I'm relaxed. I am perfectly relaxed. Marshall, what are you... But... I'm getting a divorce. Beg your pardon? A divorce. Well, not right away, of course. I mean, it, t it takes time with lawyers and dividing up the, the furniture and the books and, 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 of course, the children. But I've made my decision, and I'm going to tell Judy as soon as I get off this call, I just thought, I just thought I should tell you first. Marshall, Marshall, pl please tell me you didn't throw your meds away. Not yet. I, I, not until I checked with my therapist first, which of course is you. I didn't tell you the most important part yet. You know, maybe now would be a good time for you to run and, and get your meds before we go any further. Hmm? I'm in love. God, feels so good to say it out loud. I want to sing it. No, don't sing. Marshall, in love with, with whom? <laughs> That's funny. You know who? Whom? No, I don't. Eve, may I call you Eve? No. I am in love with you. You. There. The cat's out of the bag. You're not in love with me, Marshall. Oh, but I am. I am completely, totally in love with you, Eve. I don't know. I don't know how I didn't realize this before. I mean, you have all the qualities I have ever wanted in a woman. Here. I even made a list. <laughs> One. You're easy to talk to. That's my job. Two. You know all my secrets, and you still think I'm not a terrible person. You're not a terrible person. You see? Three, you focus on the best in me. Four, you don't make me take the trash out. You should take the trash out, Marshall. Yeah, yeah. Five, you don't make me play Scrabble with you. Scrabble? Yeah, lately, all Judy wants to do is play Scrabble. Whenever she's not cleaning the apartment or homeschooling the kids or cooking dinner, washing her hands, Scrabble. I hate Scrabble. What if I told you I like Scrabble? I would play it with you. Marshall, this is transference. It happens all the time in therapy. You see me as a mother figure, so you have transferred all your feelings for your mother onto me. <laughs> Believe me, you're nothing like my mother. I mean, I never stared lustfully at my mother's ass. Well, I, I did once or twice when I was going through puberty, but, but even then it was a vague, vaguely well, that's disturbing normal. thing. Freud taught us. You, on the other hand, a great ass. 
Oh, thank you. Freud said... One of the all-time greatest asses. That we substitute our mothers. Marilyn you, Monroe quality. Jennifer Lopez, even. Okay, Marshall. When have you ever had the opportunity to even see my behind? Oh, oh, I've seen. Whenever you get up to grab a pencil or close the door. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, that is Marshall. Neither here nor there. Transference usually happens. Do you really think I have a great ass? You and Jennifer Lopez, a dead heat. You don't think it's matronly? It is perfect. Perfect. And and your legs are... Oh, my legs. Sweet Jesus. My legs, I, I just... I always thought that my ankles were a little... Perfect ankles. Perfect. And your... I think that we should put the brakes on. I am your therapist. You're my patient, my married patient. Not anymore. As soon as this virus thing blows over, I'm leaving Judy and, and her suffocating, scrabble-infested universe. And it'll be just you and me, Eve. I'm going to take you away to some far-off beach in Tahiti. Tahiti? I saved up all my frequent flyer miles. We'll start a whole new life in the South Pacific. Bali High. I have always wanted to go to Tahiti. We'll drink coconut water and sleep under the palms and dance naked in the surf under a moonlit sky. Mm. What, what, what are those? My meds. Your meds? Oh. Calms me down. What, you, you think therapists don't have problems too? Mm. No, I, I guess we're, we're all human. Mm hmm. Uh, is that a martini? Vodka. Or kangaroo cocktail. <laughs> it's 10 o'clock in the morning. Well, it's got to be 5 o'clock somewhere, Bubba. Bubba? That's my ex husband, Bubba Jackson, real country boy. You, you, were, you were married to somebody named Bubba? for a couple months until he got arrested. Arrested? Mm. He was, uh, you know, he had a meth lab in the woods. But I, I don't want to talk about that right now. I just want to talk about us. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You know, transference works both ways. I, I couldn't say anything before, but now that you made the first move, I'm so hot for you. Really? Oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm hot and steamy, and I'm so glad that you feel the same. Do you really think I have a great ass? Uh, yeah. Because I think yours is friggin' awesome. I just want to butter that thing up and eat it. You, you, you have a southern accent. Yeah, I'm a real Georgia peach. I spent years trying to get rid of this accent so that my tired-ass Yankee clients wouldn't think that I was some dumb-ass cracker with great tits. Mm. I want to talk about that right now. Tahiti, here we come. Uh, Dr. Branstein. Eve. What's the matter, Marsha, baby? 
You didn't know I liked a little drinky poo now and then? Hmm? No, 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 I, I didn't. You were always so... In control? Is that what you like, big boy? A little control? Huh? Well, a little control. A little control like your pain in the butt wife who's always so capable and responsible and well, just wants to play Scrabble all the time. <laughs> Boring. Judy's not a pain in the butt. She she's a good person. She she balances me out. Mm. She keeps her head when things get crazy. She's sweet to me when I'm not so sweet. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which has been most of the time lately. Yeah. But the important thing is, does she have a great ass? I mean, does she have a better ass than I do? She has a very nice behind. Mm. She does yoga. Yoga? Ugh. Yoga, scrabble. Put it drip. You don't know anything about Judy. She's... She, she's wonderful. You still in love with me, Marshall? I think... I think I'm in love with my wife. Yes, Marshall. You are. So, so this, this was just... Part of my job. With the, the pills and the, the martini and all that. Oh. All that. Uh, breath mints, Aquafina. I keep them handy in case one of my patients gets confused. Transference. Happens all the time. Look. Marshall, I know this shelter at home has been tough on you, but it has been tough on Judy also. Cut her a little slack, okay? Okay. And take your meds. I will. And stop fixating on women's butts. I'll try. All right. I will talk to you next Monday, 10 a.m. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Branstein. You're very welcome. And give your wife my love. I will. Bye-bye now. Hey, Judy, you want to set up the Scrabble board? Jennifer Lopez. Thank you. And there you go. There is Scrabble. That was really, really hilarious. Great job, uh, Donnie, uh, directing uh, as well as acting in this. What's it like to, to direct these things? Because obviously you're not there in the same space. And how did you find that? You know, for the most part, it was, it was just, you know, we got to rehearse a little bit before the, before we actually did it. And it was really Gail and I just talking about it. I didn't really direct her so much. It was more just us um, playing with it. And then, then it was a matter of coming up with some ideas to help, 
ha have a little movement in it so that mm -hmm. it wasn't so stagnant um, because that would be the one trap in this um, is that, you know, it's just back and forth between the two, two characters um, sort of talk, could be a talking head thing. And so it was, a, it was, it was finding those moments where you could break that and open it up somehow, justify the movement and, 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 and where it would play into the action. And so I had some ideas for that and I made some suggestions uh, for, for Gail and, and myself. And, and you know, it, I didn't, the script was so good. Bill wrote such a great, great piece. Um, it really was Bill and um, I loved doing it. So I didn't really have to do too much in way of directing on this one. It kind of directed itself. <laughs> and, and David was, David was very helpful because um, he was kind of control, you know, he's in the control room, so to speak, uh, making sure that <laughs> it was all work, working technically. And, and David had some great observations. And so it was a collaborative thing, really. Yeah. David is the puppet master. He pulls the string. <laughs> Bill, you, you came up with the idea for Scrabble, I assume, since you wrote yeah. it. And, uh, well, first of all, there was, there was wanting to, to write uh, Don again. Mm -hmm. in the grown-up version of Ralph Mouth, the neurotic. And uh, having done 30 or so years of therapy, um, uh, I was drawn to that. And the, the idea of transfer, transference, where uh, the patient uh, uh, begins to transfer certain feelings on the therapist. And, and that, that uh, Don's character would have be, uh, he would be off his meds, which allows people to make really stupid choices. Um, so I just, I thought, well, what would happen if, if in this particular pandemic world, he was having this fantasy because he was off his meds and a, and a psychologist has to deal with it in less than 10 minutes. Mm. <laughs> so you have to get it started, fulfill it, skate on some thin ice and then get out. Uh, so it, it was just fun to give that a try. I love that. I love that he was neurotic and she was erotic. So that was a nice, mm -hmm. that was a nice <laughs> well, that was, combo there. That's fun too. Yeah. Talking to the actors now, don't you find it's a, it's a, always a lot easier to learn and to build a character when the writing is really good? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, especially for women. Women's roles aren't written very well by men, except, well, I shouldn't say that generally, but Fred did an incredible job for us. Thank you. A, it is a collaboration and and all of us writers know that and if we don't we shouldn't be doing it uh -huh. we need the actors uh and directors of course but we really need the actors participation and that always makes it fun well listen that was scrabble and scrabble is one of the videos that we're watching today and remember folks uh, this is really an opportunity and a and an entreaty and a plea uh to contribute to the actors fund the actors fund is a pretty terrific organization. I've not been a beneficiary myself, but who knows? Could happen any day. But uh, the Actors Fund is, uh, is something there to put a little bit of a safety net for performing artists and professionals, not just actors, but people that work in the performing arts. And one thing I didn't know is that they, uh, they serve people in film, theater, and television, also music, also opera, also radio. I remember there was a thing called radio. And so it came right after opera. <laughs> And, and even dancers uh, are ben benefit from the programs, which are include social services and emergency financial assistance. Not that anyone needs em emergency financial assistance. Not There's these days, no. No, no, now it is. Kind of a, yeah. kind of a you know, extraneous thing here. But they have provided, well, from what I read, uh, over $20 million in em emergency financial assistance to over 16,000 of our fellow performing arts and entertainment uh, cohorts. So this is a great time to, uh, to make a small donation or large to the Actors Fund. It would mean a lot. And it is, in fact, the purpose of why we're doing this and why we did these viral vignettes. And uh, so when, I hope you will consider that. When David first you know, said and Donnie said, oh, come in. And, and the added you know, bonus, of course, working with, with them and all of you. But the added bonus that it was the Actors Fund was just so, so crucial. I happen to have been among been doing a play in New York and on in last year, March, and 
on two hours notice, um, they said, get to the theater, we're closed. Now our billboard and our set is still up. <laughs> wow. But you know, I mean, my gosh, the thousands of people uh, in the theater, in the world of theater and world live performance that are, it's just done. And I've found when we did our little Zoom thing with Lydia and Don, it, it was so, it was very emotional because it was whenever we did that, I'm not sure, but it, we were well into the pandemic and just to be connected, to be able to perform even online, even in Zoom from our own, in my case, my kitchen, um, it was just, it was the, oh, you know, we, we, we will be able to do this again. We will be able to work and, and, uh, but, uh, and, and I feel like we were among the lucky ones to be able to do this, but this is over a year now and live performance is barely coming back into existence. And, you know, the financial hit that everyone has taken from this is just, it's, it's catastrophic. So all to say that, you know, kudos to the Actors Fund, they do great work. And in this case, ne more necessary work than ever. I was so honored to be invited and I thought it was such a touching play that we did because it was about Broadway for me. It was it was the theater and I'm and I just seen all these Broadway plays the summer before. I went to see we went to New York to see To Kill a Mockingbird, Dear Evan Handler, Dear Evan Hansen, and um, six other plays. And I remember, gosh, this can't close down. The Actors Fund is so vital for all performing arts. And I never thought you could make a living in the arts until I got the series. And my parents said, you can never make a living in showbiz. And you pay your dues on one end or the other, but we have to support our fellow performing artists and editors, stagehands, scenery, prop masters. I mean, they're more important than anything. They hold us up. That's so. right. They keep the sandbags off our heads yeah. in, in many cases. Let's uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, I want to set up the next one. We've got a great, really fun scene uh, with Lydia and Linda. Here's Care Package. <laughs> Oh God, I don't know how this thing, are you there? Judy. Oh, hey sis. Oh, thank you so much for the care package. That was so thoughtful of you. Oh uh, honey, my mother Marshall was driving through the city anyway. There's no big deal to drop this stuff. Big deal off. to me. You can't believe how empty the stores are here. They have nothing. And it takes half an hour just to get inside. Uh, well, now you have all the frozen cauliflower and edamame you need, I hope. <laughs> Did you get my package? Yes, oh, you know, sis, it wasn't necessary. I, mean, I really didn't expect it. It was necessary. I had to make room in my freezer. And I figured you'd know what to do with it. Hmm. So, how are you getting on? Oh, you know, it's just me and the four walls. Going a little stir crazy. Can't you get out? I get out every once in a while, just for some fresh air. Hmm. But I'm a social animal. And the whole point of living in Manhattan is seeing other people, going to shows, having fun getting laid. Okay. I'm desperate to get laid. All right. The magic wand ain't cutting it. Uh, TMI, you know. Oh, please. I've got more I, it's TM, believe me. <laughs> Plus, I really miss Max. Oh, I know. Oh, he was so sweet. He was the best ever. Nah, don't get puddly. You and Max made a lot of good memories together. Yeah, but you know, it really was time because he could hardly walk anymore. And it, when I was walking him, it was like, it was like dragging him. Oh, well, you should get another dog. You know, a lot of people are doing that now. You know, for oh. company. Then you have to take care of them and you have to walk them all the time. You just said you weren't getting out enough. I like my freedom. I don't want to be on a leash. The dog is on the leash. That's what they want you to think. <sighs> Valerie, you are so weird. I know. Actually, yesterday I went for a long walk. Now mm -hmm. that was weird. Times Square was almost completely empty, except for a couple homeless people here and there. It was like one of those end of the world movies, you know? There was, there was, the lights were on and the ads were playing, but for nobody. So creepy. 
except for George M. Cohen, you know, the statue, he was there. The virus didn't get him yet. <laughs> so I stood next to him and I looked out on the great white way and I started singing at the top of my lungs, give my regards to Broadway, remember me to Harold Square. <laughs> You're channeling mom. Exactly. Except she would have been running up and down, dancing up and down those red stairs. Yeah. So I was singing, and then I noticed this guy from the Times Square cleanup crew. I don't know what he was cleaning, because there was no garbage anywhere. Can you imagine New York with no garbage? It was surreal. Mm. So I finished my song, and then this cleanup guy started the planning, which was nice. <laughs> New York is just so cool. And then he says to me, you stink. Wow. Well, everyone's a critic. So I said, you know, that's really rude. And he says, who cares? Nobody hoid me. Wow. Social norms are changing. But I think it's all good. It gives us a chance to start over, clean house, and get it right this time. If we survive. I know. It's terrible. I'm so glad mom's not alive. She would probably die. You know, honey, if you're lonely, you're welcome to come out here. Out there? Judy, that's okay for you. You're a country mouse, but I'm, I need the glamour and the excitement. Well, if you change your mind, I mean, it's too bad you just didn't come back with Marshall. You could have had a nice dinner with us. I'm already thawing it out in the sink. How is Marshall? He seemed a little rabbity. Oh, you know him. I, one minute he's disinfecting the house and the, the next he's pestering me to play Scrabble. It's his new obsession. Scrabble? <laughs> is he any good? He sucks. I have to play with half my brain on lockdown, and I, I still kick his ass, but, you know, it makes him happy. So, what is it? Filet mignon? What's what? The meat. What meat? The meat you sent to us. The meat I sent you? Yeah, it was wrapped so tight I couldn't tell. Or is it supposed to be a surprise? In the package? Yes. Judy, that's Max. What? It's Max. Didn't Marshall tell you? Hmm. It's Max. Your dog? In my sink? I... You put Max in the sink? I... Yes! Why? I... Well, we're, we're thawing him out. I... I... So we can eat him. You can't eat Max. Well, I'm not planning to now, but I thought, I thought it was a steak. Didn't you read the label? The label was all faded. I thought it said May. You know, May, like an expiration date. May. Oh, are you sure this is Max? Where's his head? Oh, God, there it is. Jesus Christ. Don't leave him in there, please. Put him back in the freezer. God. What? Oh, okay. It's already getting soft. Oh, oh my poor Max. Valerie, why did you give me your dead dog? I told you. I had no room in my freezer, and they wouldn't let me bury him in Central Park. Get me out of there. Central Park? I wanted to bury him next to Strawberry Fields, you know. So now you want me to keep him in my freezer next to my Briar's ice cream and my, and my Gordon fish sticks? No, you have a big backyard. Really? You want me to put him in my backyard? I, have you never seen Pet Cemetery? Marshall said it was okay. I he didn't tell you. No! He just plopped it on the kitchen table and ran off to his... Oh, wait a minute. There's a note. <sighs> All right, frozen dog in the bag. Valerie says hi. He's a man of few words. Marshall! Dead dog in my sink. Like I don't have enough problems. Oh, yeah, I guess we'll have to bury him. He's small. It won't take much digging. And I don't suppose you have a little coffin around the house someplace. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. I, I guess we have some Amazon boxes out in the garage. I guess they're biodegradable. And... Could, you, could you maybe say a little prayer, a little a few words or something? What am I going to say? I hardly knew him. I thought you loved Max. From a distance. Wait, well, okay. I, I wrote a poem for him. I can send it to you. And <clears throat> it goes, happy dog, little dog, chewing on your milky bone. All right, we'll think of something. And then maybe get one of the kids to take a video. Yeah. Don't push it, Val. You don't want this thing going viral. Max, 
is everything to me. Oh, I know, honey. But don't worry, we'll, we'll take care of him. <laughs> I can't believe I thought you were gonna eat Mac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's too scrawny, but he'd make a good stew. Cutie. Just saying. Anyway, thanks so much. I'll make it up to you. I'll send you some Omaha steaks. Filet mignon. You got it, sis. Take care. Give my regards to Broadway. Remember me to Herald Square. <laughs> Judy, did you call me? Marshall, I have a job for you. Love you. <laughs> Love you. Bye. That was Care Package. What a, what a surprising look. Uh, <laughs> that one is. Much applause. And uh, what a wonderful uh, twist on the whole thing. Yeah, the twist ending was really fun. It was hard doing memorizing that many lines to do straight to a camera, though, and not look in the camera at all, and not read it off the screen. A lot of actors have been doing their auditions by reading, mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't want to do that. I have to memorize. So what did you do, Linda? Did you memorize? I think I did, yeah. Although I have to say, it's the first time I was my own, uh, let's see, makeup, hair, grip, DP operator. Right. <laughs> What's what I want to know. What I want to know is how is the craft service? <laughs> lousy, lousy, lousy. Yeah, um, I had fake wine. I had the cranberry juice. <laughs> had a, a ladder and duct tape was uh, <laughs> sort of you know with my crew. Yeah. And how was that? What that dog prop? What was? How, did you put that together, Linda? <laughs> yes. What did we do? What did we use? Oh yes, yes. Well, yeah. We What's did. in that package? Really? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know. Well, something, yeah. Big frozen steak in the form of a, yeah. Towel. Oh, gosh. Stuff like that, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> and it was such a cool script. Wow. Great to be Lydia's uh, sister. And Fred, yeah. you wrote this one, right? Yeah, yeah. This is actually based on a totally true story that my son's doctor told us uh, you know, right in the middle of the pandemic, I just said, what's been going on with you? And she said, well, you know, this crazy thing, like we dropped this stuff off to my sister in Manhattan, it was kind of a flake. And then she sent this package home and I, I started throwing it out because I was going to have for dinner that night. And then, mm -hmm. and then I found out afterwards that it was, <laughs> it was actually a dead dog. So, oh, well, I said, that sounds like a story. <laughs> Did they find out after dinner or before? Uh, you know what, she didn't really uh, go into it, but. She looked a little peaked. <laughs> what, what what kind of wine goes with the canine? <laughs> <laughs> that was so great working with you, Linda. It was really fun. I, you I too. Just loved it. You too. It was a, it was a great match. A great a great match. It really was. But well, she didn't I, know that you were having the hots for the therapist, though, at the time, correct? No, no, we she didn't. Know this. Uh -uh. No, she didn't know. No. Um, so that there has to be a continue continuance of that story. I hope um, if we, we want to do more of these, right, David? I would say to the folks at home, write lots of letters to Netflix or Amazon or Apple TV and say, I want to see this on a daily basis. Yeah, uh, maybe we can we can help Netflix with their share drop. So this particular care package was a great example. Uh, and Linda, you you masterfully uh, brought your laptop to various locations in your kitchen to create yes. that. Really, an incredible tracking shot. <laughs> Thank you. I'll let the union know. Yeah. Do you have a steady cam for that uh, for that computer? <laughs> no, gosh. <laughs> but you know, I mean, that is, I would say, part of the uh, the gift of of working in the industry is that we've been quote unquote trained by the best crews in the world, and we've you know, worked with wonderful makeup and hair artists and property masters and great DPs. And, uh, you know, you, you sort of get this ancillary education as an actor and actress on a set. Don't you guys, you find yes. that? I mean, you certainly, we you know, don't know everything about that, but you, but you learn and it's, it's, it's a really fun skill set at, you know, at whatever degree we've accomplished that to, uh, but I missed them. I, yeah. I, at some point, I got to work with Bob Pre Robert Preston, and and I said, "Oh, you know, don't you miss having an audience around you when you're <clears throat> doing a you know film or ten? He said, "Oh no, honey, 
he said a, a, a Hollywood crew and crew um, is the best audience you could ever, the smartest audience you could ever perform in front of because they've seen more performances than the most savvy New York audience. And I mm. just, I loved that. Of course they have. They've been working 12 to 18 hour days all their working lives and they've seen you know, the best and the worst of us. And, and uh, so anyway, all to say, I, I missed having them in my kitchen. <laughs> and on our show, Too Close for Comfort, our prop master, Leon, and, and our wardrobe woman, Violet, Leon provided craft services as well as all the props and all the little stunts we were doing. It, they do everything, you know? That's why the Actors Fund is so important to support them. If you can contribute anything at all. Lydia, did you finish what you were saying about your book and, and stuff? Like Thank that? you. Um, I, it's hard to talk about things in advance, but we are writing a reboot of Too Close for Comfort that my producers got, we've, Don Taffner, who owned Three's Company as well, got the rights back from the original British owner, Brian Cook, who created um, a show called Keep It in the Family in Britain, which was Too Close for Comfort in America, and Three's Company. So now they can do Too Close for Comfort. We've written a new, younger version with the entire, everyone moving in back in together during the pandemic. But the pandemic is hopefully over, so we're gonna morph it into post-pandemic. And that, and I've written a book on Stalin's Plot to Kill Trotsky that I'm finally re-getting back out there. <laughs> wow. I started writing before I got the series and played a dumb blonde, had to hide my brain in my bra for a few years, and now that'll mm. be done soon. It's the name of the book, I yeah. see. But that's, it's a, the book is just a series of hilarious Hollywood horror stories, and not the Me Too version, just embarrassing, <laughs> Things that happened that I've done. Where where can we get the Me Too version if we want to? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not Linda, an only fan. Uh, Linda, what what have you got in the offing? I know oh, you're working let's see. Um, I did uh, a couple projects over the uh, in the pandemic. Uh, briefly, one we shot in in New Mexico. It's a independent called Paul's Promise. No idea when it's coming out. Uh, I don't know. But and we got shut down, so we were sent to our rooms for ten days rampant COVID, eventually sent home, producer's nightmare that we were able to reboot and uh, get the project done. And um, so that was an interesting, you know, time. And I just, yesterday I got back from Vancouver. I did a little movie um, with Patrick for, yeah. uh, for Lifetime. We were in quarantine and, together, I saw on, on social media. <laughs> we were, no, that was the deal going out. Even though we'd had our shots, once you got to Vancouver, you are locked in your room for two weeks. So, uh, so we, we managed and the government checks on you every day. And uh, it was, it was really impressive protocol. You know, the, the, the resounding uh, takeaway from it was that the government really cares and uh, kept everybody safe. And uh, anyway, so we got to, to shoot that and that was, that was fun. I will say I was very, I felt very lucky because I was an audience of one most of the time. The moment for me that I had kind of an out of body experience was watching Don and, and Robert perform in, in, in Old Buddies. Just to, just to have the two of you up on screen right in front of me and I was the only audience it was so cool and you guys were so good and you nailed it in like a take or two. So first of all, Don, the redecorating of the set design behind you that you've been working on all through this thing has really paid off. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it well, changed the whole milieu. I got here late. Uh, I, I mean, here late. for and, turning and, the and lamp I up a half an inch to the right and then to the left, <laughs> I mean, it's like, look, there's no cruise like Prague cruise. We know that. <laughs> I mean, it, there's none. You know, they're very, and they're very inclusive in Prague, the crew. <laughs> You know, I know they're very inclusive. I think they have to have 75% anti-Semites on the crew. <laughs> oh, I mean, they're, they're, they're very, they're very good about that. I know that. Oh my God. <laughs> wait, wait, excuse me, what's that? What's that? Who? Wait, I'm sorry. No, tell Scott Rudin I'll call him back. <laughs> Scott's I don't think good. It's a lot We're together. He's put together this pack. It's a really good project, actually. It's uh, me, uh, Sharon Lawrence, Army Hammer, Pepe Le Pew, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, directed by Woody Allen. The Weinstein companies are distributing it. I mean, it's a really, it's a really, I, you know, hopefully you get, you know, you know, you never know, you never know. But I just wanted to say because going back to the 
the, the old buddies that Robert and I did. Um, okay. I, I, I got to work with Robert. We did the Sunshine Boys together. We did the play the Sunshine Boys together and it was such a, a wonderful experience. And, and, uh, and we, we had great chemistry and, and worked really well together. So when David approached me about doing this and the Old Buddies was the first one, and uh, he said, do you have any ideas, you know, who to play, you know, your cousin? And I got to work with Robert. We did the Sunshine Boys together. We did the play the Sunshine Boys together. And it was such a, a wonderful experience. And, and, uh, and we, we had great chemistry and, and worked really well together. So I was so glad when I called him and, and he said, I'm in. I mean, I was really happy and, and um, thank you, Robert, for doing it. And it was great to work with you again. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Uh, uh, that's very kind. We, I did have a great time. And I was talking with Dan Luria the other day and I mentioned the Sunshine Boys. He says, you and Don should do that again. And I said, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You can't we age had, out of it. We, we had a good time. We had a, <laughs> it, was, it was a fun time. Let's watch the next viral vignette. Old Buddies starring Robert Wool and Don Most. Hey, Todd. Marshall, Marshman. Long time no see. What's up, cuz? I just thought I'd check in and see how you're holding up. Oh, uh, me? I'm styling. Well, I'm doing the big quarantino. I'm serving <laughs> mankind in my own way. What you <laughs> you, you, you feeling okay? Yeah, sure. Because yeah, I'm starting to get a little stir crazy. Stuck here with Judy and, and the kids. I, I, I love them, but they're driving me up the wall. <laughs> you see, that's what you get for having a family. Me? I hang around all day. Nobody bothers me. Nobody bothers me. It's great. Just me taking care of a business. Yeah. What, what, what business? <laughs> you know, personal business. <laughs> oh. you, you, you keep rubbing your nose. Yeah, it's itchy. Allergies. How can you have allergies when you're indoors? What can I tell you? We're living in strange times. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to stay... Stay away from the news, you know. It's just so depressing. Yeah. Everybody on lockdown, the stock market yeah. crashing, people dying. Hey, hey, no sports. Yeah, yeah, that too. Oh. Hey, you know what I have been watching, though, is the Iditarod. The Iditarod? Yeah, 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 yeah. Then with the dogs, the snow. Uh, it's, it's the Iditarod. You know, it's, a, it's epic adventure. What, what, are they streaming that? Uh, well, it's animated, you know, with computers. Uh, I think it's like when they track Santa on NORAD, you know, when you see him flying through London and then Mozambique and whatever. You don't know that footage is real. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. Hey, I wonder if we'll be flying this year. Yeah, yeah. What? What? Ah, what? nothing, nothing. I guess this whole virus stuff is making me... Hypersensitive. Making you hypersensitive? You were always hypersensitive. I remember how you cried when Princess Diana kicked the bucket. A lot of people cried. Yeah, but you cried in public. I mean, that was kind of embarrassing. Hey, I'm in touch with my emotions. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, that's not necessarily a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, I went to the supermarket today at 6 a.m. because they open early for seniors and technically I'm a senior. So am I. How did that happen? We got old. I know. Like, how many times a night do you have to take a leak? I don't want to segue into that. As I was saying, they have these special hours to make it easier for, for seniors, you know, because it's not as crowded. But when I walked in there, the place was packed with seniors. I, I, I mean, I was surrounded by old people with 
with, with, with their old germs. Moving in slow motion. It was a nightmare. I started having a panic attack. I went over to the, to the organic section and just hugged a spaghetti squash until it was all over. You know, quick thinking. Then, then I went over to get some toilet paper. And it, was, it was all gone. Some old crow scored the last package. 20 rolls. I was about to grab one from a cart and run for the door. But, but there was this guy on a scooter clogging the aisle. And there was no clearance. I, I, I just started to cry. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See? See? I'm telling you. I think I'm starting to lose it. Martian, you need some TP. Because I'm all stocked up. I've got toilet paper up my ass. That seems appropriate. <laughs> what, what, what was that? What? That cough. It's a cough. It's not a big deal. <laughs> you, should, you should get that checked out. Yeah, well, I've been coughing all my life. A dry cough is a symptom, you know. That was a wet cough. Sounded pretty dry to me. No, no, no. Totally wet. Listen. <laughs> Moist. I mean, all kinds of phlegm in there. You want to see? <sighs> oh, no, no, no. Come on. Six feet. Because I'm like 20 miles away from you. Yeah, yeah, well, well, I don't care. I think, you know, I, I, I think you're getting a little paranoid, Marsh. No offense. You're starting to remind me of my mother. Why would I take offense at that? Do you remember the time when I had mono back in high school? I caught it from uh, Kelly Griffith. <laughs> she gave everybody mono. She was like typhoid Mary with a tongue. Yeah, well, I had to stay in my room for like three weeks. My mother was supposed to take care of me, but she was totally useless. A total basket case. She would walk around in a hazmat suit, spraying everything with Lysol. She saw germs everywhere. She thought they were these little people, tiny little people, smoking tiny little cigars. Yeah. Well, she was a little eccentric. She was a nut. I mean, sometimes I wonder how I turned out so normal. <laughs> One of the great mysteries. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Todd! I'm sorry. Didn't see it coming. You're supposed to use the elbow. Definitely. Next time I will. Are you sure you're not sick? No, look, I just had a devil day. You know, it's conceivable. I might have inhaled some pepper on it. You know, we just... just, just <laughs> Jesus Christ! You, you just sneezed on my screen. What is wrong with you? Marshall. Marshall, where are you going? Marshall, you think you might be overreacting? What are you doing? You know, it's not on your screen. It's on my screen. I don't care. It's disgusting. I, I, you know, I could be wrong, but I don't think... You can catch it over the phone. It's a novel virus. They don't know how it works. I'm, I'm not taking any chances. Dude, you need to start some serious deep breathing. Okay, come on. Do it with me, me and you. Me and you, you ready? Breathe in, yeah. ready? Breathe in, breathe in. Okay, okay. <laughs> what was that? Ah, you. That, you, you, you are freaking me out. You're freaking me out. Marshall, will you calm down? Hug the squash. I didn't buy the squash. Well, that showed limited foresight. Okay, listen. I'm going to talk you down the ledge. You're going to talk me down? You're hanging from the ledge. With, I, you know, from I, your fingertips. I'm totally chill. Yeah, well... That's your problem. That's always been your problem. That's why you lost your wife and your house and your business. Because you don't pay attention. You don't you don't give a shit. You mm -hmm. you float through life like you like you're a piece of seaweed. You see a tidal wave coming, you just wait for it to hit you. I'm very patient. Yeah, yeah. And this is what this is what really kills me. I pay attention to every detail. 
I, I dot every I, I prepare for the worst. And here we are in the exact same situation. It's not fair. Marshall, are you crying? No. Marshall, you're not supposed to touch your face, you know. Sorry. I'm being an asshole. Yeah, it's okay. By the way, I lost my business because of Obama. I couldn't afford the health insurance. You were the only employee. Even so. You off the ledge now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Then my job is done. Great seeing you, Marsh, but I got to run. Well, wh 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 where are you going? Personal business. <laughs> okay, okay. Just don't touch your face. Hey, stay safe. Hey, yeah. watch the Iditarod. Wow. Well, that was old buddies. Great seeing you guys. That was fantastic. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, you know, great. you know, the, the, uh, the long, I think the long friendship that you guys have had really comes through and that's a, that's a plus. I think it's my favorite episode. That's very nice of you. It's, uh, actually we don't know each other all that long. We had not really met before we did the Sunshine Boys a couple of years ago. Huh. Uh, that's right. Well, no, you made it seem right. like a long friendship. Who directed this one? That, that would be David. I, well, I didn't really direct anything. I just basically said, do it better. And then they did. <laughs> read, read the Mike Nichols book. There's a lot of that. <laughs> Good direction. How do you direct these? You can't, you can't direct these two. I basically said action. They went for it. I said, okay, that was pretty good. Let's do it again. Try a little of that's this. Pretty much, that's pretty much how the Sunshine Boys went, too. Uh, <laughs> direct them. You can't stop them. You know, if, if you got, if you do, if, you, if your casting is done right, half your work is done for you Absolutely. as a director. That's, that's the truest. Yeah, Il Ilya Kazan said that's that 90%. percent 90 his job is casting true. it right that is very true i believe that you know it's like i spent a lot of time working with the uh, the camera angles so the dps and i uh the whole thing was completely storyboarded out so i knew what my <laughs> shots were which helped us move it along there's so much more we can do with this i'm you know i mean with these kind of of scripts that fred i and and then and bill of course I, I didn't. I have. I have to be honest. I haven't seen all of them, but I was impressed with the ones that I did see. I mean, the writing is so good, and if it, you know, the play is the thing. And if the writing is good, you can do it with two people at their computer. Yeah. You can do it, and um, it was a great. Just it was an ingenious idea, and and even when COVID's over, I think there's a place that we could continue doing this. If 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 the characters are you know, are likable and and compelling, and the writing is this good. We could we could we could go places, go further with this. I'm quite surprised at how effective just actors as posted stamps can actually communicate uh, a good material, or in my case, raise the level of material. Uh, <laughs> good acting, good writing, it, it mm -hmm. kind of works, uh, in in almost any form is and that's my opinion it's all magic it's all magic sure yeah. when we did um we used to do our plays in a workshop you write them and we meet every monday and the play would get done immediately and you never got that situation in tv or film until this now it's like i looked at the time we posted this this was april 15th last year and the the shutdown was like march 12th or something so yeah. Yeah. within a month we actually had this stuff on film and you know and the fact that we could use such great actors you know that, that wouldn't be available to us uh, any other way so it's a great experience you Except know for that I'm one not... guy that uh, robert wolf filled in for exactly yeah yeah, yeah. i'll tell you yeah. I, I he's was, like one of my favorites i was part of uh you know you talked about because i think we're gonna see a lot more of this you know we shot 
I was asked, I did one scene for uh, Jason Reitman asked me to do this thing for the Princess Bride. He did a thing where he did a remake of the Princess Bride. I saw that. Yeah. And everybody did it on their cell phones. Yep. And they oh, did it by themselves. And I, and I got to tell you, it was pretty damn good. Now, the material's great to begin with. Yeah. And he had a, he had the super A-list cast, and, I, and he threw me a bone. But it's like, but he had big time A-list people there. So, um, but it was still, you know, people are making movies. I pr probably the, the Oscar winner will probably come from an iPhone on Sunday. Um, in fact, I think they're all from an iPhone, aren't they? I mean, <laughs> by, by the way, Robert, I just have to say one thing. As far as I'm concerned, we had A-listers also. Oh, that's Across right. the board, across the board. That's very kind of you to say. That's guy, you know, it's like I, you make actors feel good. That's that's Mike Nichols. Mike Nichols. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> read his book. You got to read this book. Okay. Well, listen, we're uh, uh, kind of running out of time here. Uh, uh, Ro uh, Robert, you're on the line right now. What are you working on right now? Um, you know, I'm <laughs> semi-retired, which is a phrase for when nobody hires you. The uh, uh, <laughs> really, uh, you know, I'm not working on much, and I'm not, and I'm, and I'm kind of enjoying it. I watch baseball night and day, and um, I write a lot of stuff. But I, uh, I'll tell you what I am. What's been nice? HBO Max, you know, is trying to squeeze every dime they can, obviously. But they finally put not only all all the seasons of Arliss, but they put my uh, these history monologues I did the assume the position with Mr. Wall on, and I'm getting a lot of feedback about these things. And then suddenly. And then the Arliss, because of all the social issues that we went into, is people are saying, wow, man, you talked about uh, domestic abuse and steroid abuse and gay athletes and so on. So you were ahead of your time. And I keep hearing this. Oh. It pisses me off to no end. Because <laughs> I'd much rather be of my time and have Seinfeld money. <laughs> you know, but uh, no, but I'm not really doing that much, to be perfectly honest. And it's not bothering me. That's the other. Yeah. What do you, why do you think I've been on this for an hour? You know, I got so much time. <laughs> if we were working, none of us would be. I mean, he's got to go to Prague to do this thing. <laughs> I mean, Prague. You know. Well, anyone, anyone have anything they'd like to say in parting here before we say goodnight? Oh, donate to the act fund. Yeah. Best of luck. Do more. Donate to the good, it's a good cause. It's for good people, and the Actors Fund do, does need a cause, as you know, Linda and, and you were saying. Uh, no industry has been decimated more than the theater industry. I mean, no, I can't think. Of, uh, you know, we, a lot of people have been hurt, but an entire industry has been just totally, totally. You know, I was talking to some uh, uh, somebody the other day on the Inn, as they say, and they were talking about how Broadway about them recover. For example. Wicked may not reopen, I heard. Oh. Wicked, because they never had a big advance sale. Their, they, their sale was about tourists. You know, every tourist went to see Wicked. Well, there is no tourism. So they don't have the advance sale that a Hamilton does or To Kill a Mockingbird does. So, I mean, this is talking about, a, a, um, you know, a devastated injury. And like you said, the costumers, the prop people, the wardrobe people, the set design, forget the actors. I mean, the entire industry, uh, tickets. I mean, this. Let's not forget the wig makers. And the wig makers, for sure. And, and, and the hair, well, there is no hair and makeup people on the theater. The, yeah, uh, sure, yeah. But, sure but, there are. Sure there are. But, uh, again, oh. everybody, I mean, it's like A that. Lot of people. Yeah. And people yeah. do want to get out with other people. I mean, they do. There is something about a shared communal experience. Oh, 100%, 100%. And it's the reason we all got into it in the first place, too. We love to be in front of actual actual people. And to I, meet girls. I, and to meet girls. I thought we got, I thought, I, well, that's definitely, I thought we got into it because if you're, if you're in theater, then you can get, you can get handouts from the Actors Fund when stuff like this happens. That's why I got it. Oh, you're so young, David, so young. So much to learn. Well, <laughs> so, by the way, you can still contribute, even if you're watching this and it's not live, you can still contribute to the Actors Fund and, and really any amount is helpful because there's so many people that, uh, that do need help. So thank you for watching. Thank you for contributing. Please uh, let your friends know about this and uh, uh, go back and watch it again if you like. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to all of our guests on the panel today.
and uh, hey. God bless all of you. Johnny, good luck. I'll catch you in the Ukraine. This is show business. Thank, Thank you. you, everybody. Hi. I don't know if you're aware of this, but working in the entertainment field can be, well... Rough. Wonderful, but really hard. Ridiculous. I mean, I love it, but everything about it is appealing. Let's call it challenging. It's sometimes a long time between jobs. A long time. And if there's no work, there's no money. And no insurance. Not good. And then you get a job and everything changes. There's nothing better. Until your show closes. Or the film goes into turnaround. That means they aren't going to make it. Or your TV show gets canceled. Or the dance company folds. Or you get injured. It's a lot. It's a great business, except when it's not. The good news is the Actors Fund. Oh my god, I love the Actors Fund. Now, the first thing you have to know is that it's not just for actors. Say it with me. It's not just for actors. It's not just for actors. Now say it in French. Ce n'est pas seulement pour les acteurs. Now say it in Hebrew. L'orak le sarkanim. It's not just for actors. And not just for theater people. If you work in film, television, or any of the performing arts, the Actors Fund is here for everyone in entertainment. Everyone. The Actors Fund helps playwrights, film editors, opera singers, songwriters, ushers, sound designers, key grips. Gaffers, dancers, dressers, agents, anyone in the entertainment or performing arts community, they all can come to the Actors Fund if they need help or support. And now there's the Friedman Health Center right in the heart of Times Square. I don't know what that is. All your health care can now be through the Actors Fund. They have wonderful doctors and specialists. And they have extended hours because they know that our schedules are crazy. And they take all kinds of insurance. Great. What if I don't have insurance? If you don't have insurance, there are these genius people on staff at the Friedman Center that will help you find insurance that you can afford. And it's not just for actors? That's right. Have you been to the Actors Fund home in Englewood, New Jersey? No. How old do you think I am? It doesn't matter how old you are, you should know about the home. Okay. And I would guess like 47. The Actors Fund Home is an assisted living and skilled nursing care facility which provides a beautiful and comfortable living environment for 149 entertainment professionals on six acres of property. The grounds are gorgeous. Gorgeous. The whole place sparkles and there's a friendly, compassionate staff. And they are expanding. They have a brand new rehabilitation center on site and it has been singled out as one of this country's best nursing homes by US News and World Report. All of this is the Actors Fund. There's lots more. There's emergency financial assistance, there's the Career Center. The Dancers Resource, a comprehensive HIV AIDS initiative and affordable housing. The Phyllis Newman Women's Health Initiative, senior services and addiction and recovery services. They do all of this. And they do it really well. They understand how bananas this business is. Their programs are designed with entertainment professionals in mind. They get it. They are our safe place. Our safety net. And they are completely essential to our community. And not just for actors. The Actors Fund. For everyone. 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 Everyone in entertainment. Well, I want to thank you all for being here tonight and uh, for joining us in support of the Actors Fund. I'd like to thank Douglas Ramirez of the Actors Fund for helping us. I also want to thank Jackie Lewis, Harlan Bowl, Sal Cataldi, Rachel Kugelmas, Sammy Levin, and Oren Levy for all their help. Special thanks to all of our actors, Barry Bostwick, Mary Chifo, Lydia Cornell, Max Gale Jr., Michelle Green, Yvonne Jung, Jane Kaczmarek, Adam Langdon, Jenny Leona, Fred Malamed, yours truly, Jim Meskimen, Don Most, Gail O'Grady, Emma Fitzer Price, Linda Pearl, Susan Rattan, John Schneider, Renee Taylor, and Robert Wool. And I want to thank our writers too Fred Stropple, Kurt Freed, William Bickley, David P. Levin, Stephen Van Patten, and Jenny Leona. And to our directors, Anson Williams, Don Most, Jenny Leona, and David Levin. Once again, I'm Jim Meskimen, and on behalf of David Levin and everyone who donated their time and talents to making viral vignettes happen, thank you all. 
uh, for watching. And uh, if you had a good time, why not make a donation to the Actors Fund, which is a great organization that helps a lot of people, not just actors, but also all the behind the scenes people uh, in the arts, in dance, in opera, in film and TV, and all the things that make life more beautiful. So please, any amount, uh, nothing is too small. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and have a good night.